Detroit Lions are visiting Dallas for the first time since 1977. It's been 17 years since the Lions have appeared in Dallas. Jason Hansen, one of the best in the league, but last week he missed two field goal attempts against Minnesota, and that was the difference in the game. And he'll be kicking off with Kevin Williams hurt. He will not play tonight. There he is, their run-back specialist. He was injured last week, but with the bye week next week, we'll play against Washington in two weeks. They've got Clayton Holmes and Brock Marion back to receive. That's Holmes number 47. And here we go from Texas Stadium. The kick is an angled kick that appeared to be headed out of bounds and then comes back the other way, much like a, a baseball screwball for the touchback. MVP of the Super Bowl, he's just gotten better and better. The number one pick in the 1989 draft out of UCLA, began his college career under Barry Switzer at Oklahoma. At the very top of his game, Emmett Smith seeks another rushing title. The Moose, Darrell Johnston there with him. Harper and Irvin, the great wideouts. Novacek, the tight end. And up front, the great line. Two and a. Newton, Stepnoski, looking good back from surgery last season. Kennard, the ex-Saint, and Williams on the right side. Aikman will put it up on first down, tries to set up the screen, but he got pressure that time from Pat Swilling, who's been taking a little bit of heat in Detroit. He has not been very active, has not been picking up the sacks. The ex-Saint puts the pressure on. Let's take a look at that Detroit defense, a base 3-4, Porsche, Owens in the middle, and Pritchett. And then the strength, the linebacking. Broderick Thomas, the ex-Buck, he's been real good. Spielman's terrific. Michael Johnson used to play at Cleveland, and the aforementioned Swilling. McNeil and Massey are the corners. Clay and Blades are the safeties. Belichick in motion on second and ten. Good protection this time, and Aikman's pass is off the fingertips of Alvin Harper. So a stuttering start for the Cowboys. It is third down and ten. Kind of a surprising start for me, uh, Dan, considering the fact that Dallas can run the ball so well. They're going up against the 3-4 defense, and they have destroyed 3-4 defenses over the last couple of years, and they come out throwing the football. And the way Dallas wins so often, Frank, you're right, is by pounding that huge offensive line at you over and over, and it's been the Dallas modus operandi for a long time. Just hammer away at you with those 300-pound wide bodies. Now almost a certain passing situation. And on third down and 10, Bernie Kukar is the referee, and we'll get his first call of the night. Detroit. And that That's is a first timeout. Team timeout. <laughs> Detroit. So on third and 10, they didn't like the defensive alignment, did the Lions, and have to eat a timeout just 15 seconds into the game. Marino flips it to the halfback. There are two ways to make it to the NFL. He follows Barry Sanders into the hole. One way is to dream. Blows past Richard Dent. Hope you can run the 40 and 4.3. And Score! learn how to fly. Or just let the NFL's best they can eat one Lay's potato chip and make them come play with okay. you. Ready to pay up? After all, no one in football can win that bet. Hey, who'd you expect? Troy Aikman? Lay's. Bet you can't eat just one. Imagine a rent-a-car company that will pick you up right at your door. That's Enterprise. Call us. We'll arrange to come to you. Take you back to our office, and you're on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has gotten lots of calls and letters asking, is ice beer really beer frozen like ice? Nope. Paul says that would be beer on a stick, not an ice beer. Ice House is ice beer. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste, just more of what you want in a beer. Ice brewed Ice House. It's not frozen, but you can sample a frosty cold one almost anywhere. Thanks and enjoy. Third down and 10 as play resumes at Texas Stadium. Cowboys and the Detroit Lions wrapping up the third week of the season. Wayne Fox, and he has been the man uh, who has guided this team through thick and thin and the whipsawed decade of the 90s. 
his team opening with that overtime win against Atlanta and then last week no offense good defense against Minnesota with a loss at the Metrodome. On third and ten it's a four man rush and a great job by the Cowboy line and that enables Aikman to find Novacek for a 14 yard gain and the first down. One of the best tight ends in the business and that time getting the respect of the Detroit Lions they covered him with Greg Jeffries and Still Novacek who can split out be a wide receiver be a slot man anything he wants to be good receiver and he just gets away from Jeffries opens up a little distance and Aikman is right there look at the look over the right shoulder that froze Jeffries for a moment and Aikman was right there but that made two out of three times Frank that Aikman Aikman got hit and thrown to the ground he took a great shot that time for Pritchett Emmett Smith's first carry of the game is a nice eight-yard pickup out to the 41-yard line Robert Forge makes the tackle by the way if you're if this is the first football game you've seen this weekend I'm sure you're wondering what's going on with the uniforms these guys are wearing this is one of the NFL's throwback weekends I guess the Cowboys uniforms are the 1960 version and the Lions go all the way back to 1933 and some of the people are going way back too. there's the Minster Randy White on the Dallas side I thought I was watching an old color movie of mine. To a chorus of moose picking up the first down up to the 46 yard line. The Cowboys, I see, might have gone back to the old uniforms, but they kept the new helmets. That is, uh, that's the 1990s version of the Cowboy helmet. And of course, that's the 1990s version of an NFL quarterback inside that helmet, Troy. You saw Aikman looking over to the sidelines. He does not have a helmet speaker, he gets the si play signaled in from the sidelines. They are called by Ernie Zampezi, the new offensive coordinator, and signal man. He does not want that speaker in his helmet. First down at the 46-yard line. Again, a great job by the line, and the pass is right there. He's oh, caught wow. on the near side by Michael Irvin, very close to a first down. He's a little short of it. It'll be second and one. Boy, you saw one of the strong arms in the history of this game with just a beautiful touch right over Broderick Thomas, who's six foot four, in front of the defender to get the completion. Just a great pass. This is pure touch. Aikman takes a little off over Thomas and right in front of Ryan McNeil, the cornerback. Beautifully executed. Second and a short yard, and they give it to Johnston, and Moose gets the short yard and about two and a half more. That's the third successive first down as Dallas has moved to the Detroit 43-yard line. Frank, I know you and I think a lot alike in this respect. I've never been a big fan of second and six inches, just handing it to the fullback and, and pick up two or three yards. That's To me, that's the best down in football. If you've got an explosive offensive team, you got a chance for a big play. Big play, and of course, if you have that offensive line like the Dallas Cowboys, I agree totally. Can't knock their success, though, can you? No. Quick count, and Emmett Smith piled up after he reaches the 40-yard line. A gain of a couple. Emmett Smith seeking... Yet another rushing title last year, winning his third straight, despite the fact he missed the first two games of the season because of a contract holdout. One of the, well, on his way to becoming one of the all-time greats. It's tough to anoint somebody, an all-time great in his fifth year, but a couple of more seasons uh, like he's had in the past uh, two or three, and there's no question he will be in Canton. Well, if he just plays the rest of the year the way he's played the first two games, he will win it again. Second and eight, a little razzle dazzle, a double play fake. Oh, and boy. A screen to Emmett Smith. He's inside the 30, takes it to the 29, and a first down. Stop by Willie Clay. Tom Landry would be so proud. There's a page out of the old Cowboys playbook. Nobody ran razzle dazzle better than Landry's Cowboys, and Barry Switzer adds his touch. A little fake reverse, a little fake. The pass to the right and the flip back the other direction. Uh, coming around is Harper. There is the fake. And look, Torrey will go over there and then come back to Emma Smith. The screen is set up beautifully in front of him. I was surprised he didn't get a lot more out of it. Good reaction on the part of the Detroit defense. Four first downs now for the Dallas Cowboys. The fake to Smith. Aikman rolling, throwing, and the catch is not in bounds. He was out of bounds. Michael Irvin was out of bounds. He was covered by Ryan McNeil. And covered well by Ryan McNeil. Irving took a, what looked like a fly route against McNeil, and Aikman rolled out on it, and he angled it back to the sidelines, and McNeil was right with him. One hurricane covering another. Both uh, played at Miami. Neil read this beautifully. Forced Aikman to throw the ball. 
where Irvin was going to come down out of bounds. They weren't uh, teammates at Miami, but I'm sure that Ryan McNeil knows all about Michael Irvin. Yep. McNeil was a freshman when Jimmy Johnson was wrapping up his career there in 88. Emmett swings to the outside and picks up close to eight. Massey and Willie Clay combined to knock him out of bounds. We'll go back to what we said at the very top of the telecast. Detroit plays a 3-4 defense. Wayne Fonts brought that from Tampa Bay six years ago, installed it into the defense. It's Wayne Fonts' type of defense, and Dallas has really thrived on it over the past two or three years. The thing that makes the 3-4 for Detroit work so well, they have two great tackling middle linebackers in Mike Johnson and Chris Spielman in the middle, and they are real fine run defending linebackers, but with that big offensive line, you can really hurt a 3-4. Third down and two on the game's opening drive. Aiken throws, there's another first down. There's five first downs, another catch for Jay Novacek. And so they've gone from their own 20 to the Detroit 17. On a 12 play and still going drive. How many times have we watched Jay Novacek come up with the first down reception? I mean, it's twice on this particular drive, but over the years it's just been, he's been the third down man. Never ceases to amaze me that he's here in Dallas because he didn't fit in to the Cardinals' plans, and they didn't protect him. He was a Plan B free agent, came here to Dallas, and has enjoyed remarkable success. Aikman on first down, going for six. He's got it. Alvin Harper. Oh it was either Harper or Novacek. They were both wide open. Aikman didn't know quite who, whom he was going to go to. That was an execution, that drive. A lot of guys in the Detroit huddle are going to be looking at each other, trying to figure out what was that that just happened to us. Harper will be open. Middle of your screen, Kovacek is wide open. But look at Harper. That's about as poorly as you can play a zone back in the back in the secondary. So the defense got shredded on an 80-yard drive after the drive began on the third and ten, and Detroit had to take a timeout. The rookie kicker, Chris Bonial, sends it through. Game's opening drive consumes five minutes and 49 seconds. It's Dallas 7, Detroit nothing. Visa Only Visa enrolls you in Visa Rewards, where 10% of every purchase goes towards savings on fabulous vacation packages. Look in your mail for you know a Visa application for? and get away from it all with Visa Rewards. Only one day left for Home Improvement's epic move to Tuesday. Relax. I know where I'm going. <laughs> Here on ABC. Troy Aikman. Masterfully guiding them down the field. Perfect pass. Hits Alvin Harper on the 13th play of the drive. The clock shows 9-1-1 left in the first quarter. And that's what the Detroit defense is calling right now. They may not get an answer. <laughs> Bonial kicks off to the three-yard line. This is Derek Moore. And Derek Moore is going to hand the ball off. And this is Johnny Morton, their number one draft choice. The wide receiver from Southern Cal. Out to the 41, and Wayne Font said to us last night when we met with him, a lot of razzle-dazzle guys tonight, and he wasn't kidding. Oh, I'll tell you, that was back to 1935. I haven't seen that in a long time, but that's what they used to do. Only appropriate in these uniforms, they give us a little show tonight. Scott Mitchell backed up Marino last year and got a good chance to play when Dan went down with the Achilles injury. Sanders, the great one. Perriman, Matthews, and Moore, the wideouts, and the tight end is Ron Hall, the former Buck. Lomas Brown's been there a long time, a good one. Bowens Glover's been there a long time, the center. Wydeli X Bronco and David Lutz on the right side. There was a marker that moved the ball out to the 41-yard line. Offside was the call, and it was declined. And he picked the flag up after the run back, takes it to the 41. Mitchell, the six foot six left hander, gives it to Barry Sanders, who dives and darts and moves his way out to the 45. Let's take a look now at the Cowboy defense with their tremendous offense. You tend to overlook this group Tolbert, Marilyn, Leon Lett, and Charles Haley with five and a half sacks already this year. Edwards, 
Robert Jones now in the middle with Norton in San Francisco and Smith. Kevin Smith and Larry Brown, good cover corners. James Washington had that fabulous Super Bowl. And Darren Woodson, free safety. Second down and six at the 45-yard line. Barry Sanders again. Darts to the outside, seeks the first down, and burrows his way down to the 45-yard line for a first. Tackled by James Washington. What is so important for Barry Sanders and his Lion offensive teammates tonight is that Barry can't be making his first move behind his own line of scrimmage. In last week's game against the Vikings, there was somebody in the backfield, and you see what happened. 12 carries for 16 yards. The Detroit offensive line has somehow got to move Dallas off the ball and give Sanders a chance. Don't make him juke in his own backfield. Here's the up back. This is Derek Moore, and he goes nowhere. Tackled by Darren Smith. It's not that the Lions are a little short in the uh, backfield, but you have just seen their only two running backs in uniform tonight, Barry Sanders and Derek Moore. That's it, folks. They have two running backs and no socks. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure you can play football in uniforms that up. <laughs> I hope it's not a distraction for Detroit. Their 1935 variety, a year in which the Lions were the NFL champions. Second down and 10 at the 46-yard line. Mitchell's first pass of the night is right on the mark to the 35-yard line. Brett Perriman pulls it in. And with the Anthony Carter heard, they picked Carter up from Minnesota. He's out for about two months. They're going to look for Brett Perriman a lot more. And well, they should. Brett Perriman, a fine receiver, came from New Orleans a couple of years ago. He's a good runner after he catches the ball, but they've taken him out of the slot, moved him to the outside where Carter ordinarily would have been. He is not as familiar with that spot. He's more effective on the inside, but they'll be looking for him tonight. First down at the 35-yard line. Sanders. Nowhere. Tackled back at the line of scrimmage. They converge on him. Darren Woodson, the first man to get to him, number 28. If you haven't seen Detroit in a while, you notice that they are now using a tight end. That time they used Ron Hall as an H-back. You saw him come across principally to get in the face of Charles Haley for the pass block and also for the run block. One thing about playing Dallas, though, Frank, they went to the tight end like you talked about, but I'm not so sure that this is a team that the Lions are going to have a lot of success with Sanders taking the ball parallel to the line of scrimmage. Quick hitters straight at the Dallas Cowboys try to negate some of their tremendous team speed. Second and 11, they line up Halleck in the backfield. He's really a tight end. And Mitchell, well, showing some movement. He's six foot six, but uh, relatively nimble. And out of bounds, he goes at the 36 yard line. He was chased out by Darren Smith. Don't really realize how big Scott Mitchell is at 6'6", 200. Until he gets them all moving at the oh. same time, and then it's hard to stop it. 230 pounds. That is a large hunk of man playing quarterback for the Detroit Lions. When you see the quarterback stand in his own huddle, the way players are in this day and age in the NFL, and he's looking them in the eye, you know, you know you've got yourselves a big quarterback. Third down and 12. Dallas leading 7-0. Five and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. The four-man rush. Mitchell, and the catch is made by Moore. Herman Moore developing into one of the best in the league. Pretty good coverage that time. Able to hold on and enough for the first down. Well, I thought it was Kevin Smith, I believe. I thought he got a finger on it, but it... Good concentration by Herman Moore, and you're right, Al. He is becoming one of the fine outside receivers. He has great height, 6'3", great leaping ability, a former high jumper. And it was Kevin Smith that he didn't touch it, and Moore had the concentration, looked it right into the hands for the first down. Beautiful throw. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. And the whistle, I believe, sounded before the snap. It's fumbled. Mitchell recovers it. There is a flag down. Bernie Kukar is the referee. Ball start on the offense. Brian snap the That'll be a five-yard penalty. Still first down. Okay. First and 15. You know, you never want to make too much of an opening drive in a game, but when Dallas 
goes through the Detroit defense like that and you're on the road, this is a pretty important opening drive for Detroit. Yes, and it got kick-started by the kickoff return. What a what a way to get things started in the sense that you're not starting from back at your own 20 or inside. If this was three and out, you might have been looking at a, a long route. Sanders bottled up just about at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 15. Darren Smith is there to make the tackle. Again, Barry Sanders tries to take it outside against the Dallas Cowboys, and that is hard to do, even for Barry Sanders. Well, they're noted for their speed and their quickness as we take a look at a very interesting graphic. But Dallas goes strictly with speed. They're not big. They're linebackers, none of them over 235 pounds, but they are very quick. Tough for Barry Sanders, who likes to bounce to the outside because they're going to be right in his face. Graphic indicating... The Cowboys have not given up a touchdown pass in the last five regular season games. Will it come here? No. It would have if the ball would have been thrown a little bit shorter. Perryman was open. Got past Darren Woodson, just a bit overthrown. What advantage, I guess, is an advantage is that Scott Mitchell, being a left-hander, is able to see Charles Haley, the best pass rusher for the Cowboys, and again, right off the fingertips of Perryman. And that was one that could have been laid in there. Darren Woodson on the coverage. The safety man trying to stay with the speedy pyramid. But Scott Mitchell will be at least have a good view of where the best pass rusher is coming from, Charles Haley. Third and 14, 348 to go first quarter, 7-0 Cowboys. They have to get to the 13. They give it to Sanders. Barry inside the 20. And Barry is crushed out of bounds at the 15. Vintage Sanders. Oh man, that's something. That's good stuff, isn't it? I'll tell you, you're watching two of the best that ever played this game, and Emma Smith and, uh, and Barry Sanders, and I hope nobody asks us which one we think is the best. <laughs> It'd be hard to pinpoint it. Well, Emma's got one of the great lines ever put together in front of him. Barry doesn't. This guy is electricity. No, but I sure like the fact that he took the ball going forward. Look, he's going to take this thing and go straight up the field, then make his move to the outside. Those are instinct moves yep. there. He just, I mean, that's in his mind. He doesn't think it, anything about it. His body's been doing that for years and years. 32 yards field goal attempt coming here for Jason Hansen. Dave Craig to put it down, and Hansen puts it through. So kick started on that drive by the fourth return. Hansen picks up three, and with 3.07 to go in the quarter, it's down a seven, Detroit three. Welcome to another Monday Night Football 25th Anniversary Moment brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. In 1983, the Cowboys' Tony Dorsett made NFL history. Big opening for Tony Dorsett. Look out, he's oh, got great no. speed. 99 yards and a half. Dorsett down the sideline. Stays in bounds. Can you believe that? And and show up. Oh, it's 99 down. yards. This label tells you it's 100% cotton. This label tells you it's 100% real cheese. Texas Stadium, it's a unique sight. No other stadium looks like that. Hold in the roof, home of the Cowboys. Guess they're having serious talk down here in Dallas about enclosing this all the way and turning it into a, uh, a legitimate dome, an air-conditioned uh, stadium. Yeah, that, uh, open it up all the way. That, the rest down there. that would not be an inexpensive proposition, I think. Uh, that's not a window air conditioner to keep this place cool. <laughs> Manson's kick, a flag is down on the kickoff. It's taken by Clayton Holmes, who is running back kicks tonight in place of the injured Kevin Williams. He comes out to the 28-yard line, and it's a marker down. The tackle was made by Scott Kowalkowski. Offside on the kicking team, offside Detroit. Wayne Funts took over for Darrell Rogers at the end of the 1988 season. I guess you might say the, uh, the folks in the Motor City have had sort of a love-hate relationship with him. How could you hate it? It's so well, much fun. I'm saying it, it, it's <laughs> reflective of the way the team has played through the decade. I guess you have to take a look at what it was like before Wayne Fonts took over the head coaching duties of the Detroit Lions, and they were dismal. They were not in good shape. That's Joe Avizano, the special teams coach of the Dallas Cowboys, but the Lions were pretty Offside, far down. On the kickoff number 94, the penalty is declined. First down. That's one of those things you really you have to think about, the, the call that they just made, and they, uh, they opted to take it at the 28. 
will step away for a moment. 2.58 to go first quarter. The Goodyear blimp spirit of Akron floating high above Texas Stadium. Irving, Texas. A little more difficult for the blimp fan, I think, down here. You got to get right over the top of the stadium. Looking down that hole. Real nice night for flying, though. It's a very light breeze. Temperature in the low 80s. And from the 28-yard line on first and 10, Aikman dumps it over the middle. It's Darrell Johnston to the typical chorus of moves out to the 34. ABC's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. Ice brewed ice house, ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste. And Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Second and four at the 34. 220 to go, first quarter, 7 3, Cowboys. Smith slices his way out to the 40-yard line on the first down for Dallas. Kelvin Pritchett takes the tackle. I keep looking at these Dallas uniforms, and I'm looking for Don Meredith and Bob Lilly and some of the old-time Dallas Cowboys. They were really attractive uniforms uh, for just getting on the scene, and there is the number 74 that struck fear in the heart of every offensive lineman in the National Football League. 17 in your program, number one in your heart. From the 39-yard line, Emmett Smith, just another pickup of five yards. Yeah. <laughs> just another pickup. Next week, we go to Orchard Park, New York, and this is a game, all of a sudden, of a great significance to the Denver Broncos, who have begun the year 0-3, so John Elway will try to right them again the Bills, who started with a loss to the Jets, but have now won two straight. Buffalo and Denver. Kelly and Elway next Monday. What kind of a week do you think it is on the talk shows in Denver? <laughs> on second and five, we've got a whistle before the snap. Detroit signaling that we've got some sort of a Dallas false start. I would assume if Wade Phillips could jam the signals in Denver, he would. <laughs> Blackout, I think, would be more like <laughs> Radio Free Denver. All start, number 84 on the offense prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, you don't see the false start called on a tight end very often, but Novacek was staying in the pass block that time and rocked back in his stance before the snap of the ball. Pat Swilling is the man to that side, and uh, a lot of times in this league, he ends up being double-teamed. Second and ten. Flip to Emmett Smith. And it's a minimal game for Mr. Smith out to the 42-yard line in the final minute of the first quarter. Chris Spielman out there from his inside backer position along with Pat Swilling. Spielman, one of the, well, I guess you would say, underrated com compared to what he provides for this football team. Is he from Canton, Ohio? Or He's from Masson, Ohio, Masson, right Ohio. next door to Canton. One thing about Chris Fieldman is here's a guy that you know take the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. He would have been right at home in any one of those decades. Even the 1800s. A third and seven. Moose Johnston dives for the first down. Plus to the 50-yard line. Spielman downfield on the tackle. Now standing alongside of Moose Johnson tonight. This is one big man. He is a lot bigger than his program, Wade, I can tell you that. That's the end of the first quarter. Dallas leads 7-3. to three, And back we come with Monday Night Football. This summer, we invited everyone who owns a Saturn to visit Spring Hill. Kim Irving, Texas, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Week 3 of Monday Night Football in our 25th season. 7-3. Cowboys on top. They march 80 yards with the game's opening drive. Detroit countered with the Jason Hansen field goal. Now Dallas starts quarter number two at the Detroit 49, first and ten. And Troy Aikman to put it up. To the far side, and it catches made by Alvin Harper, and he reaches.
catches for a first down and has it. Alvin Harper. How must Brian McNeil feel? Can't cover any better than that. I don't know how you can cover any better than that. I don't know how you can tackle any better than that. I don't know how you can be more aggressive, more tenacious, and still, what's Alvin Harper do? He catches the ball, and then after the catch, picks up a first down. You know, when he plants his foot right here, the ball is in the air. Aikman and Harper work on this by the hour, and there's no way that McNeil, with great position, great timing, could do anything about it. No, that's just tremendous football by Alvin Harper. On first down, Evan Smith looking for room. Well, he's going to try a Barry Sanders there. Uh-uh. Just a, a handful of blue shirts led by Tracy Scoggins. It's a loss of three. Boy, and credit that play to Pat Swilling. Pat Swilling gets out in front of that thing. Scroggins as well. And this, I'll tell you something, these guys strung that play out beautifully. It's not very often you see Emmett Smith lose yardage. And now uh, I think almost certainly what we'll see is no reluctance by Troy Aikman to put the football in the air. How do you cover 80, 88, and 84? On uh, second and 13, fake Troy. That time, the secondary did a very nice job, and the pass is caught at the 40-yard line by Emmett Smith. But put it that one to the secondary. Tackle made by Tracy Hayward. They answer my question. They went into his zone. Good coverage. Pretty good pressure on Troy Aikman. Forced him out of the pocket, and he had to check off to Emmett Smith. Good catch by Smith. They were all over him. And in the arms of Pritchett. Troy Aikman gets it to Smith, but he could do nothing with it. Third and 11, the Cowboys have converted all three third downs tonight. Aikman trying to get into the 28 for the first, and it's incomplete because it's off the hands of Michael Irvin. And Benny Blades provides the coverage. Well, if you're going to Benny play, Blades provides a little more in that back there also. Oh, when boy. When you're a receiver, you're thinking about where is Benny Blades, and I think that might have been on the mind of Michael Irvin a little bit. Well, the ball, the ball was, was high. Away. Yeah, it was high. But he knew that Benny Blades was lurking back there somewhere. <laughs> Irvin got those arms back in in a hurry, but that was uncharacteristic by Troy Aikman. That ball sailed on him and, and was high, really too high for Irvin to catch. Now John Jett to punt, and he'll probably... Uh, angle it here. Line of scrimmage is the 39. He floats it up. And he sends it down to the 11-yard line. And Mel Gray, one of the very best, has to fair catch it there. So Detroit has it. They're down by four. 12.52 left in the head. The Lions trailing 7-3. And Detroit with the ball at the 13-yard line. First down. Colbert gets credit for the tackle. The yard is to pick up second down. Let's call it nine. And Barry shows no ill effects from that knee injury of a year ago. He was went down in the 11th game. He had uh, over 1,100 yards rushing when he missed the last five games of the season. But he has so there's no effects from that knee injury whatsoever. Look at those quick moves. He's Everything's a, so instinctive with him. He's a human pinball, oh. is what he is. He just seems to just carry him off of if, if, off of space, off of tacklers. It's wonderful lateral movement. Second and nine, they fake it to Sanders, and that opens it up on the far side. The catch is made by Aubrey Matthews, and he has a first down up at the 30-yard line. 16-yard pickup for the fellow from Delta State, Aubrey Matthews. Whether this drive goes any farther or not, it's been successful for Detroit. Inside your own 20-yard line, inside your own 15, you need to get a first down. Against a team like the Dallas Cowboys, three and out is a backbreaker. A key first down pickup for the Detroit Lions. Let's see if they can keep it going. From the 30-yard line. Picks up nine yards on the play up to the 39-yard line. Yeah, James Washington is one of the best tackling safety men you're going to find in football. He just can't get into Barry's legs. You, no way. Washington uh, brought him down, but not until he had spun and twisted for about another three yards. Now, look at him peck along looking for the hole. Tony Tolbert misses right there, plants the left foot, and now Washington takes a shot at him. He misses, 
and close to a first down. Nine yard pickup. The guy that's got to stay home, Frank, is Robert Jones, the middle linebacker. He wants to overrun play. Here's Barry again. And that's a first down. It's a gain of six. Well, it's throwback weekend. I guess we could call him a scat back. A scat back. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, it's fun this weekend. They set me a jersey from. The 50s and Dan won from what the 70s, I guess. Dan, mine fit. Here's a little. No, size. actually, uh, the jersey I have is from the uh, Cardinals back in the 30s. Oh really? Yeah, one of the old franchises. Uh, back, I think the oldest continuous franchise in the NFL is the St. Louis Phoenix Arizona Cardinals, and there's Billy Sims on the Detroit sideline talking about throwbacks from the 45-yard line. And it's off the right fingertip of Aubrey Matthews. Billy Sims uh, making some old acquaintances tonight, not only in terms of the Lions, but his college coach on the other side of the field, Barry Switzer. Boy, did he put out a lot of outstanding players, Barry Switzer, over the years. Somebody offered him a job professionally. Who was it, Mindy? So look, I got no more number one draft picks than you've got. That was Kansas, right Kansas here. City <laughs> talked to him in the, uh, the mid-70s. Why should I leave this? I've got no more, more number ones than you have. <laughs> Second and ten at the 45. I think he was telling the truth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sanders. Oh, yes. <laughs> Turns no gain into about a three-yard pickup. It's a shame Barry Sanders doesn't have much in the way of body control. <laughs> Can you believe a guy is going at that rate to the outside and then realizes he has nowhere to go and can change direction and just get back upfield and just pick up three yards. Look at this move right here. Ah. <laughs> That's an extra two just out of that move. Oh, I know. It's, it, it's good work by Sanders. Third down and seven. Detroit at the 48. Dallas ahead 7-3, 9-45. Left in the half. Scott Mitchell. Loses the football, oh, and they're going to say incomplete. Incomplete, his arm was coming forward. Well, there seemed to be a little indecision there. At first, it, it, it looked like the officials were considering ruling it a fumble. Jeff Coke forced the issue. Well, what's new? Jim Jeff Coke, a guy that you probably thought was going to be out of this league four or five years ago. Every year, Jim Dallas Jeff makes Coke. plans to go on without him, and every year it seems all he does is just make plays like this. The reason his arm was going forward was because Jeffcoat knocked him forward. Greg Montgomery, the former Oiler, one of the very best in the league. Clayton Holmes is back to receive the kick. And he sends it down to the 14. And Holmes out past the 20. And Clayton Holmes was out of bounds back at the at the 30 Kevin Williams, as we mentioned earlier, not able to go. Very sore knee, and Clayton Holmes puts on a show. Right there. 9.24 left in the hand. Nine twenty-four remaining in the first half at Texas Stadium. The Cowboys coming in with a mark of 2-0, and, oh, and Detroit is 1-1. One and one. Week three coming to a conclusion. 7-3, Dallas on top. It is such a kick to look at those uniforms. A lot brings back a lot of memories for me when Detroit was ruling the roost in the 50s. World champion, 57, 2, 3, 4. Bobby Lane and company. Emmett Smith, the pickup of eight. Well, we, we take a look at one great running back uh, of the present. How about one from the past, Lynn Swan? Oh, Billy Sims, over 5,100 yards with Detroit Lions. Billy, could you play in this one-back set for Detroit? Well, maybe, but I like the two-back set with the fullback in front of me giving me some help. Yeah. Now, you're a good friend of Barry Switzer. You won the Heisman Trophy at Oklahoma when he was there. When he became the head coach of the Cowboys, your friends came to talk to you about what kind of coach he'd be. What would you tell him? Hey, it's a guy that'll go to battle for you. You know, he respects his players. He's a, he's a, he's a player's coach. And with the coaches, he let his coaches coach. And that's a good thing about it. You think all the criticism was unfair when he came in to take very, that job? Very much so, but you know what? He used to that criticism coming to Texas because every OU in Texas weekend, we had that criticism <laughs> because of him recruiting so heavily the players from Texas going to OU. So you think he'll do a good job here? Yeah, without a doubt. Great supporting cast. 
I love the guy. I wish I could play for him. You know? I know. I saw you at the training camp the other day. <laughs> Philly, thank but you. I'm 14 years too late, though. <laughs> okay, Al. All right, Lynn. And, uh, well, the man he's talking about, Barry Switzer, undefeated right now. Yeah, but he makes the point about people in Texas don't like him. You got to leave right after the game when you were coaching Oklahoma. Here's that. Him and Smith, who had picked up the uh, prior first down, gets three here. On second the secret seven. was to leave the cotton ball and look like you were leading them on to bigger things. That's exactly right. You were being chased out. Benny Blades is shaken up, and Blades, who missed a good part of last year, and uh, still has a little bit of a limp, is now has another problem. Benny broke his leg last year and had an ankle that was still bothering him during training camp and not all the way back. One of the most ferocious hitters in the National Football League at free safety. Benny Blades of the Lions. Uh, second and seven. Johnston was falling down and I'll tell you, had that one been deflected and then picked off, it would have been a, an easy touchdown for Willie Clay. Detroit hasn't done much of it, but what you saw right there with the blitz is what troubled Dallas last week against Houston and they really struggled in picking up the Houston Oilers blitz finally winning that one 2017 but this was a a full blitz on the part of the Detroit Lions and Troy rushed the pass a little bit to usually sure-handed Daryl Johnson. Billy talked about Billy Sims talked about that two-back set liking that fullback in front of him I think Emmett Smith would be the first guy to agree with him. Third down and seven. Aikman deep drop good out and a flag goes down Michael Irvin takes it to the 34-yard line. Well, the flag came down right in the vicinity, and you got to wonder, how did Michael Irvin get that wide open? He's a big physical receiver. Well, he, Novacek is also tied yeah. up with uh, Spielman. Yeah. Offensive interference. This is going to go against Michael Irvin. He loves to get right up there chest to chest with a defender and then subtly push off. Well, every now and then that push off <laughs> is a little less than subtle. Pass interference, number 88 on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Michael works. Irvin not even questioning no. that call. It works both ways. 18-yard gain negated. It's now third and 17. Michael Irvin, you can see the result of his push already had the Detroit defender on the ground, Robert Massey. And he did it right in front of the official. Third down 17 from the 38-yard line. They have to get to the Detroit 45. It's thrown underneath, and Emmett Smith will be tackled at the 42. It will be fourth and long, and they'll punt that swilling. Makes a stop, and we have 6.45 remaining in the half. Cowboys on top by four. A fine stop he was, too, out. That's swilling in the open field against Emmett Smith. That's a mismatch, and he was able to make the tackle. Yeah, Pat Swilling really made his reputation as a as a pass rusher. 17 sacks back in 91, but he's a complete linebacker. He can drop off, he can cover, and he can tackle in the open field, and he tackled one of the best. John Jett to punt. Mel Gray, one of the very best of all time. Tremendous kick. Whoa. And Gray will field it at the four. And takes it back to the 13. He's one of the few who would have License to take a kick like that inside the five yard line. 54 yard punt and a nine yard return. A couple of those they may take the license away though. Yeah. <laughs> and Bernie Kukar with a little pushing and shoving going on. I don't see a flag, but there's a little bit of a conference here, so that is clearly indicative of a an upcoming penalty. Yeah, Mel Gray took that ball almost at the three yard line. I, I'm sure he would have liked to have done that over again. I don't see a flag anywhere on the yeah, field. That's, but, yeah. that's why we had the music yeah. and we're ready to go to commercial and the whole thing. But uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's why. Huh? It's off the field. Our vision obviously only restricted to the green part. <laughs> we, we only talk about what happens between that's the right. lines, right? There it is. I said it's all the way across at the far 20. Mm -hmm. Ooh, personal right. foul against Detroit. So their bad field position now becomes even worse. They're hanging in there at 6-10 left in the first half, and they only trail by four points. Now, this is where mistakes can absolutely drive a stake a through your heart. Ball, number 21 on the return team, on the run back, block the man, out of bounds, half the distance to the goal, first down. Harry Colon.
So they'll start from the six. Six ten to go in the half. Seven three. Dallas. So Ellen emails Peter that Cope of Africa. This drive back at their own six yard line. Scott Mitchell, the quarterback. Larry Sanders is the setback on first down. And Sanders up to the ten. The Cowboys, the greatest story in sports this year with the, the coaching change. Nobody really knew what to expect from Barry Switzer, but he's been, I think, real smart about it. He's just let it kind of roll along. And so far, so good. I think he's handled it as well as he ever could handle anything. I mean, it was a difficult situation when you come in and replace a winner like that. And we asked him about it last night. He said, look, he said, that's just me. That's how I am. And I, I believe him. Well, he said, and he's right. He said, I would have been incredibly stupid to come in here and, and think that I could tell them how to do their business when they won two consecutive Super Bowls. Play fake, catch his name. That is Brett Perriman. You know, I think a lot of people may have been confused in that opening press conference. Remember when he, he, he carried on a little bit and he was very excited and hugging, jump. People didn't know what to expect, but that's really not indicative of the way he is. What will be interesting will be when the first real crisis happens. The first time that some real player discipline is necessary. The first time that he really has to assert himself, maybe among his coaching staff or among the team. Or when, and, he, puts the, or when he puts the wishbone in. That's right. Well, now, that would be asserting himself. He got That'll tell the tale of Barry Switzer, the first crisis in how he handles it. From the 17 yard line, Barry Sanders breaks one up past the 30. Barry Sanders to near midfield. Okay, I'd pay to watch this. He is remarkable. Well, now we've got a, a very upset Kevin Smith pushing everybody in sight. Well, this makes the second time today that Detroit had really poor field position and has worked their way out of it. Again, straight up the field goes Barry Sanders, and then he starts to make his moves. If you just let this guy go three or four yards and then begin the creative process, you're going to have an exciting night running the football. So far, so good for the Detroit offensive line. I better hurry. 28-yard pickup. We're down to one on the play clock. The take to Derek Moore. The catch is made by Herman Moore. Gain of eight. To the Dallas 47-yard line. It'll be second down and two. Yeah, Herman Moore, you have to respect his speed. There, he was going against Larry Brown, one of the fine defensive cornerbacks in the league. And Dave Levy, the offensive Levy, coordinator. Former USC offensive coordinator and has come in and now assistant head coach and offensive coordinator for Wayne Fox. Sanders now up and over 7,000 yards in his career. He's on the sideline as well. Second and two, and they give it to Derek Moore, and he bangs his way inside the 45, and that's a first down for the Lions, who are hanging right in there. And I think I'd run Mr. Sanders back out, just mm -hmm. like that. Sixth year out of Oklahoma State. Look at the average. There's the impressive number. 4.7 yards per carry. Ladies and gentlemen, that is awesome. Fewest games required to reach that mark. Uh, Dickerson, Brown, Campbell, <laughs> those pretty good names. Peyton, Otis good Anderson, and Barry Sanders. From the 43, he'll pick up a few more. Will Barry as he takes it to the 37-yard line. Oh, it's so important to have that cast around you as a running back. Barry Sanders has put together those numbers with not one of the great offensive lines of all time either. He's done much of it on his own. He has the style that can do it on his own. And you think about, what do you think about Eric Dickerson? Had he stayed with the Los Angeles Rams and not got himself in trouble with weaker offensive lines, what he might have done in terms of numbers. But I'll tell you, Barry Sanders has done a lot on his own also. Scott Mitchell buys time and then guns one and Herman Moore. Oh, is it taken away from him? Yes, it is because Kevin Smith was right there. Well, I can't believe that didn't draw a flag, though. Kevin Smith bumping into Herman oh. Moore. They've been calling. Oh, they calling it so closely against the defensive box, and that time there was jostling on the part of Kevin Smith. Well, Herman Moore got away with a shot there as he gave Smith a poke right in the chops. This ball is in play for a while. It's off the ground. After that point, it's a moot issue as to what happens. But this crowd in Texas Stadium saw Kevin Smith get wrapped in the face by Herman Moore. 
And, but he got away with a face mask after it as Sanders picks up a first down. Oh. He's run out of bounds by Woodson. And Brett Perriman, little Brett Perriman, threw the block to Springer. How many running backs do you give the ball to on a third down and a long four? He is your best percentage play, and, and that is that pays a tremendous tribute to one Barry Sanders. But he got good blocking on that one. It's a dead play if it's not for the hit by Perryman. I think he hits Brock Marion. Let's see who it's on. There it is, right there. Is Brock Marion? He puts Marion on his shoulder blades. They're the first thing that hit the ground. First and 10, 28 yard line, 218 left in the half. Moore to the 25, a rapidly played game. And, uh, just getting a blow on the Detroit bench, who's the great one. So if you get Barry Sanders on one side of the line, Emma Smith on the other, you're going to have a fast game. Yeah. You keep the ticker moving. Under an hour. Two minute warning for the first half. Dallas 7, Detroit 3. Sanders still breathing heavily. 13 carries uh, tonight thus far. He had only 12 last week in Minnesota. And Miss Smith appearing none the worse for wear. It is second down and seven at the 25-yard line. Two minutes to go in the half. Cowboys seven, Lions three. Crowd imploring the Dallas D to get with it. Metro for the end zone. So with Carter Hurd, Perriman getting a chance, he throws a beautiful block on the preceding play, catches the touchdown here, and the Lions have the lead. Perriman right downfield, gave it a move to the inside, froze the Dallas zone, and Mitchell was right on stride with it. Well, one of the two Dallas safeties to that side just got spun all the way around by that inside move you referred to by Brett Perryman. He was wide open, and what... Well, James Washington, number 37, appeared to be the guy, but what a drive when you consider this thing started on the six-yard line. 94 yards on the road against the world champions by the Detroit Lions. Jason Hansen, the point after. Well, we talked about what Lion team turns up on any given night. The good Lions so far in the first half. Oh, and Washington get, got himself caught with that in move on the part of Perriman. A good move and a fine pass by Mitchell. Marino flips. Is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines, flying the low fear airline is just plain smart. Ralston Purina Company of Checkerboard Square. And Lincoln Mercury in the complete line of 1995 Lincoln and Mercury automobiles. Well, the Lions. 94-yard drive, lead 10-7. Jason Hansen will kick off. Clayton Holmes and Brock Marion are back to receive for the Cowboys. And things are a little quieter in Irving. Considerably at the goal line. It's dropped. It is dropped again. It is picked up in the six by Clayton Holmes, and he is smothered at the 11-yard line. The Cowboys start deep in their own territory. They have three timeouts. Van Malone made the tackle on the last play, and we have 150 to go in the half. A minute and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. The skyline of Big D, Dallas, Texas, just to the east of Texas Stadium here in Irving. We have college football coming your way Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. There oh, there's a the big one. Well, Dan's Michigan Wolverines host Colorado. Washington against Miami, Arizona, Stanford. New Mexico, BYU, Alcorn State, and Sam Houston State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. What were you saying today about the Wolverine and the Buffalo? The yep. Nip their heels a lot. The Wolverine needs to nip at the Buffalo a lot of little bites before. <laughs> you get a lot of Wolverines. Colorado's awful good. Screen from the 11. It is Emmett Smith. He has the first down. And Emmett Smith is all the way out to the 30-yard line. That deep drop as Aikman went back into the end zone. Set it up. Roderick Thomas finally corrals him. 19-yard game. Almost like Emmett was saying, I've seen enough of Barry Sanders. Give me that football. Well, the Cowboys still have all three of their timeouts remaining in a minute and 25 seconds. So, a lot of time to make something happen. Aikman started to stumble, and then Emmett Smith started to look upfield. Oh, look out. He might have hurt his leg. A collision, and Emmett Smith 
This place turns uh, very silent. Yes, that was number 51, Broderick Thomas, sailing through the air, and their legs collided. And Emmett Smith is hobbling off. Now, hopefully, that's just a blow to the shin, or you hope it wasn't actually a joint, either the knee or the ankle, that took like the shot. Might have kicked the shin bone. And boy, we know how it was that. Oh, and does that hurt? Mm, that smarts for a little bit. Emmett's going to drop the ball and then do a forward roll and watch his leg when it's in the air. Ooh, right there, right on the left ankle. He took the shot on the left ankle from Thomas. Lincoln Coleman is his backup. And Troy's going to take off, and he gets tackled by Spielman and calls a timeout with 1.08. He's well, short of the first down. And there is a lump in the Cowboys' throat right now as the medical staff looks at Emmett Smith. Athlete's foot. It's a predator made up of many types of fungus that eat your First report we're getting from the bench is the ankle. And we'll uh, await further information from the Dallas sideline. And uh, back the word we're now getting is that he may have done it before the hit itself. He may have sprained the ankle before he was he hit. Thought he caught it in the turf and twisted it. They don't see that. Third and one now for the 39. You've got Lincoln Coleman in there, but they give it to the up back. Who's who runs right into one of his blockers up front. He ran right into Stepnoski, but then thrust forward to the 41. Go back and take a look now at the Emmett Smith play after Dallas picks up the first down. All right, we looked at the collision after the somersault. Let's look at his ankle before. Oh, there's the right ankle. You're right. Look at the right ankle as he rolls out. And that's really what precipitated the, uh, the forward roll. And back to live action. Lincoln Coleman Smith back up. Takes it out to the 48-yard line. With uh, that much time, the clock ticking down, 33 seconds. Two timeouts for the Cowboys. Where they're burning an awful lot of time here. They're using a lot of time here. Second and three. Look out from behind, Pat Swilling. And how often did he do that? in the Superdome with an Orleans Saints year after year. Well, it helps to try to block him. Troy Aikman looking downfield with his back turned and nobody bothers to even block Pat Swilling. That is how you end up playing the season without your quarterback. And Emmett Smith is back in the ballgame. Third and 11. Meanwhile, with two timeouts left, we're almost out of time at the half. And that's knocked down at the 43-yard line. Good coverage on Novacek with four seconds left. Jeffries and Spielman and a bad, on the tackle. That choice by Troy Aikman. He does not make choices like that. Spielman back right in front of Novacek. And an expression of dissatisfaction by the crowd here at the Texas Stadium. From Musburger, Peter King of the studio, Jerry Rice and Deion Sanders will uh, be interviewed at halftime, and then Tim Allen will come along, and he's here. The star of Home Improvement will visit with us from Texas Stadium. And this will be the final play, barring a penalty of the first half, and it's a John Jett boot. Of all things, though, well, that's wonderful, except the half is over. Well, it'll look great on the stat sheet, though. Then Swan checking things out with Emmett Smith, so uh, we'll hear it right from the horse's mouth when we start the third quarter. Aikman and the Cowboys go off the field, trailing 10 to 7. And back we come after this message and a word for our ABC stations. And my colleague Peter King of Sports Illustrated said beware of the Lions in a low-scoring game. And that's what we've got. <laughs> Big news stories this week on Wednesday. Bud Selig said that's it for the baseball season. Didn't take Deion Sanders long to find work, did it? Next day, he signs with San Francisco. Played yesterday in Anaheim against the Rams. That's where Peter was. But Peter, there's controversy about this contract. Some other teams say, wait a minute. The Niners fudged on the salary cap to get him. That's right, Brent. I was with Carmen Policy in Anaheim, the 49er president. They were incensed over the accusations that they had somehow fudged with the cap and invented this salary slot for Dion. because for all anybody knew, last week the 49ers are right at the cap and voila, they got $1.3 million for the guy. They did it by restructuring three contracts. And what happened over the weekend with all the hue and cry about the contracts, Carmen said, I'm calling Paul Tagliabue on Monday and I'm getting to the bottom of this and I'm going to get this stuff to stop right now. 
And the management council, the NFL, tonight at 6.30 formally approved this contract, so we're going to have no more contract controversy, and Dion officially is a 49er now, probably starting this Sunday. So we no longer will see this scene. Number 21 wearing an Atlanta uniform. Dion matched against number 80, Jerry Rice of the 49ers, because yesterday, here was the throwback garb that Dion Sanders was wearing. And earlier this evening, Peter and I spoke to both of them. Now, Jerry, Jerry, here's a picture we never expected to see, man. Here you are side by side with number 21. Uh, your wife says you can sleep at night when you play Atlanta. What's it like having Dion Sanders now on your side? Well, that's true. You know, I never thought I would uh, have this guy on my side. <laughs> you know, he's a great football player. Uh, he's very talented. And really, I'm just glad I don't have to face him anymore. Dion, a lot of controversy as usual surrounding you about this contract. There was even a report yesterday that Nike even subsidized part of this contract and paid you for some of the money that you didn't make signing elsewhere. What's your reaction oh, to that? I can't wait to see the check. You know, if they pay me, I really can't wait to see the check. I don't understand how people could have the accusations like that. Why can't a man just do what he wants to do and be happy in this world? Dion, let me ask you, why did you choose the San Francisco 49ers? Uh, the New Orleans Saints uh, said that they had offered <laughs> right. more money. Was Jerry the only reason why you I signed? Play, I didn't want to face uh, him no more. I couldn't <laughs> sleep on Saturday nights, man. Uh, I didn't want to see him no more, so I might as well. You know, there was an old cliche that says, if you can't beat him, join him. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what I did. I joined him. Dion, why did you take significantly less money to go to the 49ers? Because I have a dream, and people can say what they want, and I have a dream of winning the Super Bowl. I don't want to go down in history as a, a decent ball player that never got a chance for the big dance, as, as Jerry put it in the commercial. But I have a dream. I mean, and realistically, San Francisco 49ers presents me with the greatest opportunity of playing and winning the Super Bowl. Jerry, let me uh, ask you this about having Dion now. We look down the road, the Dallas Cowboys, back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships. The 49ers are trying to arm themselves to unseat the Cowboys. How will Dion help you make this possible? Well, we re we really not looking that far down the road, but I think uh, Dion, he brings a lot to the team. Uh, you know, he's a very flashy guy. He's very talented. Uh, you can line this guy up against a receiver one-on-one, -on -one, and, uh, you know, he's going to shut this guy down. Jerry, uh, you've got great wide receivers, uh, certainly on the 49ers. But if I'm the owner or the coach, I've got to sit there and I've got to dream about being in the middle of the fourth quarter. I need a touchdown, and I can line up Sanders on one side and Taylor and put you in the slot, and now I've got three of them. Man, that's a nightmare for any defensive back in the National Football League. What do you think about Dion also being a wide receiver with the 49ers? I have no problem with that. You know, uh, Dion, he's very talented. He can go uh, either way. You know, my dream is to play a little defensive back, so maybe we can, uh, you know, just uh, swap sides and, uh, you know, I can play a little DB and he can play a little receiver. Mm -hmm. Jerry and Dion, we appreciate it. Good right, luck. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the way, man. Both of appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Three-point lead, and they're going to get the football as it bounces out of bounds, and uh, this year it will come out to the 40-yard line on of that short and that's where Detroit will begin the initial drive of the second half Lions a two touchdown underdog coming into the game are on top by three ten to seven you start to say a lot of people just came home and tuned in I'm sure they're a little bit shocked a little bit surprised Detroit has played good solid football this has not been because of turnovers but because because of mistakes they have just played good solid football first and ten at the 40-yard line Scott Mitchell the new 11 million dollar man 11 mil over three hands the ball to Barry Sanders Last year, the Lions had three quarterbacks, and as uh, somebody put it very aptly, when you have three quarterbacks, you really don't have any. <laughs> That's true. Quarterback by committee. But now they have one, and there's one of those three quarterbacks who's playing for the Dallas Cowboys, Rodney B. Started 57 games for Detroit over his time when he was there, five years. Won a lot of games for them. For an Achilles tendon in 91, and never regained the mobility that he had. For that. Second and seven at the 43-yard line. 
Sanders stopped about three yards shy of the first down. He's pushed out of bounds by Marion and Woodson. It'll be third down and three. Sanders now 99 yards after being limited to 16 last week at the Metrodome. And he has been such a difference here tonight. He's dominated this game and of course the touchdown to Perriman putting the Detroit Lions ahead right before the half but it has been the concern on the part of the Dallas defense of stopping Barry Sanders that has started to get the Detroit Lions receivers open. Third down and three from the 47. And it's a little low intended for Sanders and incomplete. They would have had a good play going if they could have got that pass to Barry. But it was low and away, and there's no way, even with Sanders' body control, that he's going to be able to stop, catch it, and then do anything with it. Greg Montgomery to punt. Back to receive is Clayton Holmes. Again, Kevin Williams, their run-back specialist, was shaken last week. They'll have a bye week upcoming with the Cowboys, and then uh, they say Williams is ready for action the following week at Washington. Good deep kick. It's dropped at the nine-yard line and loose there. Rolling, and oh, it's going to go out of bounds just about at the pylon. Detroit never controlled yeah. it, so it's going to be a Dallas football. Derek Moore was there. Oh, boy. It went right through the arms of Holmes. It was hard to tell whether he touched it or not. If he does touch it, it's a muff. Yes, he appeared to touch the football, so that baby is free. Ooh, and it was in and out of the arms, and that is that is so tough. Moore had it, just couldn't control it. Two guys upset on this play. Moore and Holmes both. At the two-yard line, Emmett Smith uh, starts in his familiar tailback spot here as the second half first drive for Dallas commences and Emmett takes it out to the five yard line Michael Johnson makes the tackle all right Lynn let's get an update okay Al I talked with Emmett Smith when he came off the field you're right about when he turned his ankle I asked him if he was coming back he said of course he acted as if the sprained ankle was more no more than a cold and he had to be in this ball game Barry Switzer also said at halftime told his team just to stay poised he said they've been playing pretty good a couple of mistakes he thinks they'll stay in this ball game and come out on top Al well, they're down by three early in the third quarter. And it's dropped by Darrell Johnston. It'll be third down and seven. Well, Detroit made an awful lot with the, the poor field position that they had in the first half. They were able to drive out of the shadow of the goalpost, and now the real onus is on the Dallas Cowboys. Can they do it? That was not a very pretty pass play that they just attempted trying to get it out to Daryl Johnston. Well, it, and yeah. look at that. Mm. Keep in mind what a winning team that is. 0-5 trailing at halftime are the Dallas Cowboys. Who would have thunk it? Mm. Third down and seven. And he can throw his election complete. The pass intended for Michael Irvin. He was falling down as it got there. And it's fourth down, and Detroit's going to get the ball in pretty good position. Irvin actually slipped as he tried to make his stop and move to the outside. A little sprint trying to get McNeil's attention. He did that, but he slipped, and then when he tried to go back for the ball, he lost it altogether. The Cowboys are just out of sync. They're just little things, but they're compounding themselves, and... And when that starts to happen, the wheels can come off very quickly. They pounded Pittsburgh in the opener, but they have been sporadic since. Here's John Jett's kick. It is a 51-yard kick. It is fielded by Mel Gray. And he takes it back to the 44-yard line. So we have 12.30 to go in the third, and the Lions up by a field goal. Spirit of Akron, ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Budweiser Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. 
what the Dallas Cowboys have is a real game on their hands. The Cowboys prohibited favorites tonight against a Detroit Lions team that was no way to sugarcoat it. Plain manhandled last week by the Minnesota Vikings. Embarrassed by the Vikings. They certainly are not embarrassing themselves tonight. 10-7 Detroit. Lions have it at the Cowboys 43. First down. And here's Sanders, and he's up at over 100 yards as he takes it to the 40-yard line. Barry Sanders, yeah, Barry Sanders just changes the game, the way it's played. And so many backs would have been stopped from the line of scrimmage. But what he does to a defensive player, and one of the Cowboys are a little slow getting up. It was Dixon Edwards. Now he's on his feet. But he makes you hesitate before you take a shot at him. And when you hesitate defensively against the Barry Sanders, he's gone. He is so slippery, so quick, so instinctive. And even the Cowboys, as quick as they are, they have been missing tackle after tackle. Always missing the first one. Second and seven. Tate, Mitchell, throws a duck, throws it away. That was a very smart duck. <laughs> he was about to go down. He knew it. He threw it out of bounds. Tolbert and Russell Merrill. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you guys playing a whale of a game tonight. We haven't called him out yet, but Lomas Brown, the left tackle of the Lions, he's the guy that's matched up with Charles Haley. Lomas Brown, a pro bowler. Uh, Doesn't surprise you, does it? No, no. Certainly the Lions' best offensive lineman, but Charles Haley's been kind of quiet since a couple big hits at the very beginning of the ball game. The Detroit offensive line has really come on. Third down and seven. And Sanders is stopped at the 37. Oh, boy, decision time here. Well, this is the staple of the Detroit Lion running game, the delayed handoff, the draw, whatever you want to call it, the Barry Sanders, and Detroit played that one awful well. Well, earlier we saw a third down and four. They went to Barry Sanders, not the short pass. Now we're going to have a fourth and three. I, they're going to get football to Sanders somewhere. At the 36, fourth down and three. Two. Here come the Cowboys. Mitchell gets it away, and the fingertip catch is made by Herman Moore. One-on-one -on -one coverage that time. And a good call by Scott Mitchell. He saw the single coverage, and the coverage by Kevin Smith. Now, Kevin Smith only goes about 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 Herman Moore, 6'3". He's a high jumper. He's jumped over 7'2 in his collegiate career. And it was a good change at the line of scrimmage by Mitchell. And a perfect throw by Mitchell. Oh, yes. An absolutely perfectly thrown football. Well, that could have drawn a couple of flags. Mitchell's or Smith's play against Moore. 25-yard game on a fourth and three. First down at the 11-yard line. It's to Sanders. Angles his way down to the nine-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. You know what you like? You've got to like about Scott Mitchell's change in that play at the line of scrimmage. And that was on a fourth down, and he took a great chance. If he had changed that play at the line of scrimmage, come off the field after having turned the ball over, it would have been a tough, tough thing for him to do. But he made the right change, got the play, got the first down. You can see him holding his helmet. They've been having some trouble with the communication from the sideline, and it's almost as if he was having a little bit of an audio problem. Trying to hold the, the speaker a little closer to his ear. Second down and eight. And he just flings that one out of the end zone. Nobody open, nobody home. Retool, third and eight. Another good move by Scott Mitchell. Get rid of it. Don't take the sack. You've got a third down coming. You're well within field goal range. Don't turn it over down here. He learned a lot under, of course, Don Shula and those years with the Miami Dolphins and playing behind Dan Marino, how could you not? Mitchell appears to be struggling again to get the call from the sideline. The play clock is inside 10 seconds. He has no choice now but to take a timeout. And remember, they turned that speaker off at 15 seconds, yeah. so it was dead anyway. Big play coming up. He takes the T.O. 9.48 left in the third. Lions up by three. So it's third down and eight after the timeout. The Lions have it at the nine-yard line. Nine minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Detroit leading 10-7.
And the crowd exhorting and imploring their defense to stiffen here. Big play. Mitchell showing a real propensity to go to Herman Moore. Moore split far to the right. Fake to Sanders. He looks over the middle, and it's caught for the touchdown. There it is. Herman Moore. Split to the right. Ran a little slant. Touchdown. Again, Kevin Smith primarily, but the help would not come from the inside. Woodson was there, but this is a big man. 6'3", 210 pounds, and he can really go up. Good call, Dan. Well, they went for him when they needed it on the fourth down, and here they go on the long third down. And you know what? That ball was high and behind Herman Moore, and he went back and got it. And, Frank, you called it during the play. Where was the safety for the Dallas Cowboys? You can't let a big man run the middle of the end zone like that without being physically challenged. Jason Hansen for the point after. <laughs> He just does boot it through. Herman Moore, with a lot of great receivers in this league, the Irvins and the Rices and the rest, Sterling Sharp. Remember the name, Herman Moore. you buy proof positive from MCI when it comes to long distance for business it's always the right call you're looking at millions of dollars of lost savings savings you never received because your business used AT&T which is why when it comes to savings hundreds of thousands of businesses are demanding proof MCI will analyze your AT&T bill and give you proof positive written proof of how much your business can save by switching to MCI so call MCI and see how much of this is yours. A new wind is rising, bringing change, bringing the all-new Ford Windstar, a totally new minivan. Windstar is the only minivan that combines standard dual airbags, five-mile-an-hour bumpers, and four-wheel anti-lock brakes. Plus, it meets all passenger car safety standards. It's safety that takes the minivan in a whole new direction. The all-new front-wheel drive Ford Windstar. The future of minivans begins today. The Dallas Cowboys wearing their 1960 uniforms. In 1960, they were 0, 11, and 1. <laughs> well, they haven't lost a game since last Thanksgiving, regular or postseason, and that was the, uh, the famous... Leon Lett on the ice, covering the kick, losing it, Stojanovic winning it for Miami. It's been that long since Dallas has lost. They're down by 10. Hanson to put it in the air for Detroit. Kick fielded at the 8-yard line. Clayton Holmes has had some problems. Not this time, though. Good run back. Clayton Holmes brings it all the way back out to the 40-yard line. Greg Jeffries makes the tackle. That's a 32-yard Run back. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, first of all, it starts with a play fake to Sanders, which means something because of the over 100 yards. But look at Herman Moore go back for that football. Folks, that is a Pro Bowl catch. You cannot overestimate how difficult that catch was. And look at the reaction here by Scott Mitchell. No way he saw the touchdown grab by Moore. And look at that. They haven't had a Pro Bowl receiver since Pat Studstill in 1966. More than any other team in the NFL. A longer crowd. Here's Emmett Smith. Up to the 47-yard line. Look at that Dallas not having lost his last Thanksgiving. The last team to beat them in the playoffs. Detroit Lions. In 92, they beat him 38-6. to That game at the Silver Dome in Pontiac. The Lions haven't been here. Well, no member of this Lions squad has been here as a member of the Lions. 1977 was the last time they made a visit to Texas. Second and three, Harper in motion. Emmett Smith, the ball carrier. Runs into a pile at the 49. It's going to be third and one with 8.50 to play in the third quarter. And Detroit leading 17 to 7. Remember, Dallas on the opening drive went 80 yards for the touchdown looked invincible since then punt 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 the one that really hurt them was that drive that started on their own two-yard line their last possession where they did a three and out 
That gave Detroit outstanding field position, and they converted it into a touchdown. Third and one, double tight end set, and Mr. Smith is a 50. That, that stick is just about dead on the 50. Herman Moore out of Virginia. His quarterback in college was Sean Moore, who spent some time backing up Elway in Denver. Remember, we had him in the Sugar Bowl in his senior year yep, against Tennessee. Very close here. The clock stopped here for the measurement. 8.06 to go in the third quarter. Timeout for measurement. Certainly a 10 point deficit for a Cowboy team that has the offensive weapons they have is really not that big a deal. Ooh. And mm. about two inches, it appears <laughs> to be the difference. Wow. First down, and. Go for it. Everybody seems to it. Simple as that, those three words. Fourth and an inch. Not a no-brainer decision by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. In this stage of the ball game, eight minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of coaches in this league that would automatically punt that ball away. Mm -hmm. This is this is aggressive coaching here by Barry Switzer. Very aggressive. Will Aikman sneak? Will he give it to Johnston? Will he give it to Smith? Novacek provides leverage on the left side and moving that way is Emmett Smith and he breaks it. Emmett one man to beat and the angle of out of bounds. The flag goes down at the 10 yard line. Face Ryan McNeil oh. the face mask. Yeah. Who got the face mask? Oh, oh, Ryan oh. McNeil definitely has the face oh, mask. Yeah, yeah. Smith. And for a minute I thought that was John Riggins coming around the court. That's what happens That's in short yardage and we're being Detroit says it's going to work against the Cowboys. And I will get everybody up there in short yardage, and you pop that gap like this. You'll see right on the left side, and following behind the big fullback Johnson, all of a sudden you're into the opening so quickly. Well, Stepnowski leads that way. Newton has a fine block at left guard, but the oh. big block was 2-8 and a at left tackle. And that'll, that should be the 15-yard variety there on, on McNeil. There's one face mask. Huh? Dueling face mask. Yeah. Well, I think Emmett got his own in there. You know, there were three flags that were dropped, so we, we could have, uh, we could have a pair of face masks. I think em Emmett's face mask came as a retaliation. I don't know whether that's going to affect it or not. Well, McNeil's definitely would be the fit. What they might be discussing is whether or not McNeil's was a 15-yarder and Smith's is a 5-yarder, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in which case the 5-yarder would get thrown out. And they do a half, a half the distance to the goal line. Boy, Wayne Fonts didn't need this. Well, a gutsy call set that up. Short yardage defense. Good block by Johnson. It looks like an old Ryder Cup meeting, doesn't it? Those caps. <laughs> against Detroit and then a personal foul against Dallas. Well, now the 15-yard variety of face mask is a personal foul as well, so mm -hmm. will they offset? I don't know how you could call McNeil's face mask an inadvertent face mask. He held on to it for a long time. Yeah. Offset. Yeah. Offset. And this the, the key part of this is it comes back because that was not a dead ball foul. Offsetting penalties negates hey, the play. Money, hey, money, 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 money. They ne it negates the entire play. It's fourth and inches again. And you gotta go for it now. Yep. You've oh, established oh. a precedence. To see first on the part of McNeil, there's no question about this one. And then in retaliation, I think Emma Smith, after a couple of strides, he hooks it. I never saw Emma Smith's face mask. It looked, his first one was a straight arm. It looked like it was under, unless that one clipped the face mask. But I didn't, I didn't see a personal foul committed by Emmett Smith. Real close call, but here it goes. It's academic right now. The play comes back. It's fourth and an inch. Try it again. Does it again. First down. 
39-yard line. Going back to those offsetting penalties, the official on the scene must have ruled, had to rule, that Emmett Smith, that's, that straight arm, must have been to the face. Now, all right, let's see. This ought to give us a look. All right, this ought to tell us. No, it's right in the chest. That is right in the chest. That's a perfectly legal play. I did not see anywhere on that play where Emmett Smith no. commits a personal foul. Ball at the 39-yard line. Aikman, under pressure, throws low. One hopper incomplete, intended for Johnson. Oh, and Aikman got rolled up, sandwiched. He got hit from both sides simultaneously. Thomas coming from the outside. Uh, former number one draft pick uh, for Tampa Bay, and he too, like Cass Willing, has had some problems, but not at Detroit. They have been very happy since he came as a free agent from Tampa Bay. Model citizen, I think, was mm -hmm. the term that Wayne Fonts used to describe Roderick Thomas. Sixth player taken in the draft back in 1989. Very productive citizen for the Lions. Second and ten at the 39-yard line, and Emmett Smith picks up three, takes it to the 37. We have six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Detroit leading 17-7. You're just tuning in. I'll repeat that. Detroit leading 17-7. Again, the Cowboys just a little out of sync, just a little bit behind in their passing, just missing a block here, running into each other like you saw that Derek Kennard colliding with Emmett Smith. Taking a few yards off the play. It's been that way for him all night. Third and seven at the 37. We send Johnston in motion, and there's all kinds of action before the snap. Novacek makes the catch, but that's going to be academic. Troy Hickman's got one of those real fine hard counts. Detroit anticipating pass, set in the pass rush mode, and Aikman gave him that hard count. Soft side against Detroit. Hmm. Detroit? Detroit. Detroit. Take a look at Troy Aikman. You see, as he throws a little head into it, too. You got to be a little careful. You can draw a flag, but you see it right there. Dan Owens, number 90, well into the neutral zone. He was, uh, he did a nice job to avoid contact, which would have meant it was a dead play and just the automatic five yards. Dallas went ahead and accepted the penalty, which brings up now a third and two. Third and two at the 32, 5.50 to go third quarter. Lions 17, Cowboys seven. Troy, and he's got Novichok, the tight end, and it's a first down to the 21-yard line. Spielman makes the stop. And another first down reception for Novichok, the king of the first down receptions. You have outside receivers like Harper and Irvin that are going to draw the double coverage. You're a good, smart tight end like Novichok to move around and find that opening spot. He's the guy you're going to go to on third down, and they do it all the time. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. And it's Smith. Splits the hole, and then he gets hit hard. Well, by Benny Blades at the 15. We talked about Benny Blades and his ability to deliver a shot. That is a textbook look at a free safety and how he drives through. That is a textbook look. Yeah, he, that, was, that was such a crucial shot. Knocked out our monitors, I think. <laughs> Watch this. He weighs 220 pounds, and he really unloads on Smith. He altered the direction that Emmett Smith was going. Scott Galbraith in the game. He's in motion on second and three. Smith takes it to the 12. Very close to the first down. He's written down by Kelvin Pritchett. Boy, was there a big-time lead block that time by Daryl Johnston. That's, that's how a guy gets the nickname Moose. Shy by a yard, it's going to be third and one. You've got him listed at 238 or something like that. He, if he's not 250, I, I, I missed my mark. He is a big man. 
Third and one at the 13-yard line. Tenth play of this drive. Moose. Going to be close. If he got it, it was by an antler, and I'm not sure he did. <laughs> Be the fuzz on that end. <laughs> the, uh, there was a wall of Detroit Lions there. Now we got to the sticks in. I don't think he got it. Or no, they really spotted it. That was an excellent job by the front wall of the Lions. Lions had the original fearsome foursome, didn't they? Was it? I believe it was the Detroit Lions back in uh, Roger Brown. Karras? Was he with Alex? Karras McCord. Oh, McCord, yeah, yeah. And the Rams stole it, or? I'm trying. Well, here we go again. They have converted one fourth down on this drive. And remember, Detroit on its last drive converted a fourth and made a payoff. So the fourth down play has become huge. And here's the situation. The Cowboys going for it. You're, still, you're down by 10. You're going to need a field goal somewhere along the line. But with fourth and an inch, this drive, six minutes and 24 seconds old at this point, they'll go for it. What a great time for play action. Short count. And it's Emmett Smith leaping to the eight yard seen guys jump over the pile. That's an unusual look at a guy running over the pile. He just scaled it. <laughs> he started to leap over it, found a little footing up at the top of it, got himself an extra yard out of it. Watch this. Somebody's going to somebody's gonna have tire tracks on the back of his jersey there. And when Moses moved, I'm going to leap right here. Oops, I got a place to come down. A convincing first down pickup for the Cowboys. First and goal at the nine-yard line. Rolling is Aikman. He throws. Scott Galbraith makes the catch, and he's rolled out of bounds at the one and a half by Broderick Thomas, who saves the touchdown. First catch of the night for Scott Galbraith, the much-traveled fifth-year veteran out of USC. Well, they ran this play in the Flag first down. half. against Detroit, and that, that's significant in the sense that it's an automatic first down. Well, when you have your running game going like the Cowboys have and Detroit, you can use play action so effectively. A little bootleg, we saw it earlier, as Dan mentioned, in the first half, very effective once again. Now they're going to check out the options. Well, the option is, do you want to have it second and goal at the one and a half or first and goal at the four and a half? That's the option right here. As many times as they have picked up one yard on short yardage on this drive, I think you'd want to take it for one. I, I agree with you, Frank. I'd rather I'd rather be inside the two-yard line. Well, they haven't stopped them yet on short yardage, so why not? This is an interesting little call here. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. So they, they, they'll give up the couple of yards, three to be in. Pacific to take the extra play and send him and over well, the top. The ball's all the way down at the one. In fact, the nose of it appears to be even inside the one-yard line. That's a that's a pretty sweet spot on the football field. Tough to give it up. He declines it here. It's second down and goal at the one-yard line. Oh. And Emmett Smith does not get in. Chris, Chris Fieldman. Fieldman. Yes, sir. Boy, what a play by Chris Fieldman. Boy, he starts about four yards back in the end zone and comes right over the top. Times it beautifully. That's a perfect play by the middle linebacker on a goal line situation. Well, that was right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a, a couple of inches out of it. There comes Spielman it. right in the middle of your screen. Watch him come up and over. Oh, that's just, that's perfect. There's no other way to describe it. Perfect. Third and goal. And he tossed him at Smith. Doesn't get in. It's going to be fourth and goal, and that's Broderick Thomas leading that charge. Well, now this is a decision time because there's a loss of about a yard on that. Mm -hmm. and you're going to need you're going to need a field goal somewhere along the line. A little over.
over a minute to play in the third quarter. Lions leading 17-7. You need a field goal anyway. Yep, and Bonyol's come in. Yep. It's back to the two and a half. Well, that's good defense. Spielman again, number 54, getting help from Thomas. I think part of Barry Switzer's decision here is made by the way the Lions play. Now I know what you're getting ready to say about not taking the penalty, not getting the extra down. We, we, we had pointed it out. There's Bonio just putting it through the right upright. I think Barry Switzer's going to say, hey, two whacks at it from inside the yes. one-yard line. If we don't get it, we don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. They settle for three. There's Chris Spielman, the heart and soul of this Lion defensive team, and boy, he can... He's not much for patting himself on the back, but his his play on second down at the one-yard line but stop them at Smith. That got his team going, and they stiffened in hell. Bonio's kick. This is taken by Mel Gray, and he brings it back out to the 30-yard line. You know, I talked to Ernie Zampezi earlier about those two guys in the middle of the two linebackers. He says, but those are the guys I'm worried about with our running game. He was absolutely right. Long-time uh, NFL offensive coordinator now in his first year with Dallas, taking over when North Turner, his pupil, went to Washington as the head coach. His offense is centered around Aikman and that man, Emmett Smith. It is 17 to 10 Detroit. Lions have it at the 30-yard line. Sanders. Great. Clear up one thing. Remember Bernie Kukar on what appeared to be the double face mask, and we were wondering how he could call it on Emmett Smith. He said personal foul against Dallas. We now get word the personal foul was on Eric Williams, the tackle away from the play, and that's uh, the reason that that play came back, that fourth and one, the 40-yard, what would have been the 40-yard game by Emmett. But the only flags that we could see, and there's Eric Williams, the only flags that we can see were all sprinkled around mm -hmm. the confrontation between Emmett Smith and Ryan McNeil, but it certainly answers our question because we could not see right. any potential foul committed by that guy, Emmett Smith. End of three, Detroit leads it 17 to 10, and back we come with Monday Night Football after this from our ABC State. Yeah. Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. Start the fourth quarter. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Swan patrolling the sidelines. 17 to 10 Lions. It is second down and a yard and a half at the 39 yard line. Scott Mitchell gives the ball to Barry Sanders, and he has a first down up at the 42. 45 minutes of action. Let's take a look at the numbers through three quarters of play. I think the remarkable one will be no turnovers by either team. Very even. In a lot of games since we've gone three quarters without a turnover. Dallas, Dallas still not over the 100-yard mark in, in rushing. Unusual for them, but they dominate in the time of possession. But these guys lead on the scoreboard by seven. At the 42-yard line. Mitchell, play fake, going deep, looking for more, incomplete, good coverage, Kevin Smith, one of the finest in the league, right there with him. And getting help from the inside, Yeah, Dallas plays it so loose back there, but they cover each other so well, Kevin Smith knows he's got outside responsibility, turn to the outside, look, he has help on the inside from Washington, but again, Kevin Smith, one of the best in the business, he slides into the man coverage, he's good. Well, that was brilliant by Smith, but I'll tell you something. James Washington was a good four steps behind. Sanders cuts it down. Again, vintage Barry, first down to the 45 of Dallas. Kevin Smith made the tackle. He just doesn't plant the foot and cut. He plants the foot and explodes into the cut. It's almost impossible to judge the tackle, and he is so low, you just never get under it. Barry, 6.33. 6 6.3 per carry, though. Look at that average. 6.3 against the Super Bowl champions, folks. Year in, year out, it's a, around 4.0. This year it's down to 3.7 at this point in the season. I think it was a great shot. Emmett Smith looking at that stat. Board. That 6.3 just went to about six. Yeah, it did. That's the Dixon Edwards. Well, Barry Sanders takes chances. 
you know, if, if somebody is is in a mood to knock his running style, is it on a lot of occasions he gives yardage in the attempt to get the big play. And if there is a difference between Sanders and Emmett Smith, it's that Sanders has more runs that lose yardage than Emmett Smith. And Emmett said, hey, this guy is making me look bad in my own house. Now, how about some support? Second and 14. So throws and the catch is made and rolled out of bounds is Perryman at the 42-yard line. And Perryman has scored a touchdown earlier tonight. Good call, good delivery by Scott Mitchell. They have second, third down, a lot of yards. Well, the second down and about 15, they get half of it put themselves in a good third down position. There's Lomas Brown right there. Look at this work here at the bottom of your screen against Haley. Boy, that's that's really controlling your guy and taking him clear out of the picture. Well, since you're really going, Haley's been a non-factor yeah. tonight. And this guy is off to a great start. Five and a half sacks coming into tonight. Off to the best start of any defensive end in the league. Lomas Brown tonight, he's neutralized. Timeout, Detroit. And seven for Detroit at the Dallas 42, 12.30 to go fourth quarter. Lions up 17-10. They need a pass rush. The Cowboys need to put pressure on Mitchell. They rush four. And he throws for Perryman, and he drops the ball at the 13-yard line. Perryman was beyond Brown, and in between. Brown and the safety man coming over Washington and Scott Mitchell put it in there beautifully it would have been a tough catch but one you should have caught take a look again he's got it the only place where it could have been completed what a fine delivery and they rapidly line up the punt and Montgomery floats one that bounces inside the 10 31 got down there to keep it from going into the end zone and pin Dallas deep. 40-yard punt, a beauty. 12-14 left in regulation. 7-10 Detroit. They're not want to. They're not going to want to give these uniforms up. <laughs> or that it exceeds 1998 car safety standards. Or the fact that it gives you more choices than any other minivan. Dodge Caravan, the best-selling minivan of all time. No wonder so many people buy it, and so many companies try to copy it. It had to be you, a wonderful you. It had to be you. Afternoons are heating up. So you want a little love in the afternoon? You'll find your favorite soaps now at New Times. Watch weekdays on Channel 2. 12 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Improbably, Detroit leading 17 to 10, and Dallas backed up at its own two first and 10. Aikman to throw out of the end zone, and the catch is made at the 19-yard line. That's an 18-yard pickup, Michael Irvin to the 20. That's all pro stuff there. I mean, you're deep in your own end zone, throwing a deep out over a linebacker into the hands of the receiver. That's pretty special. Well, you talk about needing it. Remember, the last time Dallas was in this position, they went three and out, punted away, and Detroit got a touchdown as a result. This was a big play, Aikman to Urban. This, this gives Dallas a lot of room to get things going now. They can use their entire offense now. From the 20-yard line. Great protection. Slings went out to Moose Johnston. <laughs> Set the first down at the 33 yard line. Oh, this is what the Cowboys need to get the crowd back in it. <laughs> Everybody needed it except McNeil. He's the only guy that didn't need it. Here you got a 235 pound guy, and uh, McNeil was not in the classic tackling position and paid the price for it. He was in the catching <laughs> position, and rightfully so. That's the position he has to take. First down, Dallas at the 33. 10.55 to play. Aikman looking deep for Irvin. It's a little underthrown and dropped 
blocked at the 36-yard line. Look who was all the way back in the coverage. Same man that stopped Emmett Smith. Short of a touchdown in the goal line defense, Spielman, Chris Spielman. Spielman's just running his butt off downfield. Has no idea where the football is. Has no idea. There's Spielman in the middle of your screen at the bottom. He's got yeah. his eye on 80, though. <laughs> he has no idea where the ball is. Where's the ball? <laughs> I've never been down here before. <laughs> now, that's, that's, that's running an awful long way and just... By happenstance, finding yourself in the middle of the play. That is a throwback football player, I'll tell you that. Up to distract him. Second and ten, and Evan Smith busted up to the 39-yard line. It's going to set up a third and four. Emma Smith is known for his big fourth quarters. He can certainly provide a lot of boost to the Cowboys' offense if he can pull it together. There you are right there. Those stats show a lot. Well, those numbers, I think, are also indicative of this is about the time of the game where the pressure of that huge offensive line begins to take a toll on the defensive line. This is a pretty small group for, De for Detroit and a rather large one for Dallas. Third and four, and uh, the Lions came across. It's going to be a free play and a first down any way you want to look at it. Hovacek makes the catch. Robert Porsche came across. That's fatigue. That's when you make a mistake like that. When you get a little tired, the concentration wanes, and you make a you make a dumbbell play like that and, and, and come across the line. Offside on the defense, 91. And again, a little bit of a hard count by Troy Aikman, but if I'm correct, that was the fourth first down reception for the tight end, Jay Novacek. A little head bob. Here they come. This is where Detroit has to really somehow summon up some concentration, focus, because they've got the world champions coming at them. They've been behind before. They know how to do it. And the 49, Aikman throws over the middle. Moose Johnson fumbles at the 50-yard line. And the Detroit Lions have the football. First turnover of this game. And that's a result of a guy putting his helmet right on the football. Right on the football. Kelvin Pritchett recovered it. It's, it takes a helmet on the football to get it to pop out like that. Let's take a look at that. Just perfect. Mike Johnson. And that is how it is done. The plastic of the helmet is right on the pigskin, and away it goes. Former Cleveland Brown. Who could hold on to the football when it gets hit like that with a helmet? Barry Sanders somehow escapes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Darrell Johnston, uh, you talk about man fighting dogs. In the last four years, it's only his second fumble. I just marvel at what Barry Sanders can do that no one I've ever seen play this game can do. He's just like a spider going down the sidelines. How he kept his balance, I'll never know. Let's take a look at the fumble again, the helmet. Bang, Johnson right on that ball. I don't know that anybody could. Robocop couldn't have held on to that football. Here's Sanders again to the 33-yard line. Under nine minutes now to play in regulation. 17 to 10, Detroit. Boy, and then Daryl is really unhappy with himself. He's a money player, an offensive leader, but that happens every now and then. That was just, just an absolutely pinpoint strike by Mike Johnson. Second down six. Sanders stop at the 34, minimal loss. Good play there by Tony Colbert. He honored his responsibilities playing the outside. If Barry Sanders is going to come his way, he's going to turn him back in, and that's exactly what Tolbert did. He can make a minimal loss exciting. <laughs> Look at this spin. Yeah, Barry wanted to go outside, and that, that's just really well done by Tolbert. Third and eight at the 34. Lions up by seven. Big man Moore, top of your screen. In motion. He slants across the middle. 
Mitchell looks that way, throws it off the hands of Moore. Gunned it in there, incomplete. Tell you one thing, the Dallas pass rush has disappeared. They're fortunate that that ended up an incompletion by the Lions. Because Scott Mitchell had all the time he wanted and had the whole field right in front of him, Frank. One of the few bad passes he's going to that. He had too much on that. It was behind Moore. Very tough to handle. Fifth goal attempt is coming up here. Jason Deason. One of the very best. This is having a lot of confidence in your kicker. Craig sets it down. No question. And it is no good. Had plenty of distance. Oh, yeah. But off to the left. He had a 62-yarder back in college, so there's no question about the distance. He can get there. And here's where it costs you an extra seven yards now. Because that ball comes back to the spot of the kick instead of the line of scrimmage. The 42-yard line. The stadium in Irving, Texas, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff for beauty. Monday Night Football Week 3. Next week we go to Buffalo. Bills host the Broncos. Here, Detroit on top by 7, 17, 10. Dallas has it first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Off to Emmett Smith. He's rolled out of bounds by Tracy Stoggins up the 46 yard line. And next Monday, it's a marquee matchup at quarterback because we've got Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills coming off a pair of wins after the opening day loss to the Jets and John Elway and the Denver Broncos. 0 3 right now. Talk a about critical them. game for them. Talk about desperate. Yeah. Stop just shy of the 49-yard line. It'll be third and about three for Spielman. Makes the tackle. Boy, right, look at Spielman trying to get his guys fired up, slapping heads and everything. Well, what Gets Robert Porsche right on the helmet trying to get him going. A rock in the middle. A real rock. Remember the All-Star County football team a long time ago? Three members here in attendance tonight. Up here in the booth, yep. Wayne Fonts over on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Detroit better account for Novacek. Third down and three. And it's over the middle of the second well, play, but there's a flag. And they accounted for Novacek illegally. There comes another flag. Willie Clay had him wrapped up. Novacek again with that little move, the head fake to the outside, broke away from Clay. Clay had nothing, nothing else he could do. Wrapped his arms around and drew the flag. First off. Well, one thing about it, if you're going to mug him, mug him good. <laughs> he did. This. Not much. In dispute about that call. First down at the 45. Johnston. <laughs> and he makes McNeil with him to the 36-yard line, shy of the first down by a half a yard or so. McNeil saying to himself, now, what are the odds of getting a linebacker out here to give me a little help? He <laughs> has hammered McNeil a couple of times tonight. McNeil, about 175 pounds, not a... Not a big fan of this matchup that he keeps fighting himself in out in the flat with Daryl Johnson. He looks up, here comes 48. <laughs> looks like about a 21-wheeler to him. <laughs> Didn't we just do this? <laughs> <laughs> Second and inches at the 35-yard line. Second and inches, why not? Well, it's deflected and it's incomplete. Irvin was the intended receiver. And that ball was uncatchable. That's not going to draw any kind of a flag. Well, some of the people here in attendance started mm -hmm. booing. I'm not sure that they saw the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. Robert Porsche got a hand on it. Here 
There's Porsche 91. It goes right off his right hand. Wasn't close, but did his job. Well, you can see the sweat on Porsche. It's not terribly hot, but it is certainly warm down on that field in the 80s when the game began. And you just don't get any air movement. The air is perfectly still at the base of this stadium. Here's Smith with the first down and the left more inside the 20, and the field rides him down at the four. Well, they contained him for a long time, and all of a sudden he got the gap. When he loved that. He's saying, I'm still the man. Well, Mark Tuane, Nate Newton, they've been doing a strong job of blocking tonight. Boy, they did it again. Got another good block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. Is that Galbraith? Larry Allen. Oh. Larry Allen comes in at tight end, number 73. And Johnson again with that big block in front. Yep. Allen caves in that whole left side from the tight end position and Aikman says I need a timeout they were down to two seconds on the play clock 455 remaining now it's, it's too early really to talk about do you go for the win or do you go for the tie but just as a point of information we discussed it last night with Barry Switzer and he said his inclination if he has a situation where he goes down to let's say the, and I specifically said the final minute of the game he said he would kick and go into overtime. So clearly here in this situation, with a lot of time left, you're looking at one point. How did he put it? He said, am I going to, to give my quarterback one shot at it, or am I going to give somebody like a Troy Aikman eight shots at it? Well, of course, if you, if you with that philosophy, though, you're basically saying, I better win the coin flip. Or i got a defense that's going to get the ball back for me, and Detroit's been able to move that football tonight. And there. I think being at home is a big, uh, you know, weighs heavily in that decision as well. Jerry Jones has made his way to the field. Well, the last time that Dallas was in this position, they were party to a quite a fine goal line stand by the Detroit Lions. Let's see what they can muster up this time. Here we go, Emmett Smith. As we said before, just comes on in the second half. A combination of many things, not the least of which is he's a wonderful player. I think we might see him go right to the air from out here. Out on first down. First and goal, they split Irvin wide to the right. Double tight end set. Johnson the fullback, and Smith is the tailback, and uh, we've got a whistle before the snap. A lot of finger pointing going on by the boys in the Honolulu and Silver. <laughs> That's what it's called, the Honolulu Blue. I know it's what, it's what it's called. That's why I said that. I'm just, I'm just reiterating. That's what a good play-by-play -play guy does. He just repeats what the analyst says, right? <laughs> I'm glad you finally figured it out. I'm glad it has finally been an awakening for you, Al. <laughs> Four years in Michigan. Then I moved to my sophomore year. What did you take? Arts and crafts. You know it's Honolulu Blue. That's first and goal at the nine. underneath by Novacek. That takes it only to the seven to the second down and goal. Boy, but absolutely no pressure on Troy Aikman. He checked off on about three receivers, got good coverage, as you might suspect, with no pass rush. But you can't do that very often to Troy Aikman. He'll find somebody. No, you're right about that, Frank. But I'll say this about Detroit. They're putting some hats on the ball carrier. They are swarming to the football. But if they're, your point is well made, they better find some way to alter Aikman's rhythm or they'll pay a big price for it second and goal at the six Dallas down by seven Emmett Smith swings to the outside touchdown Cowboys Nate Newton with the big assist on that one and you wonder how does a guy 330 pounds run like that Nate Newton from left guard comes all <laughs> the way across the formation out in front and makes the block making that man the check writer in this organization very happy I mean, that was a great block it was, oh. wasn't uh, your mediocre block now watch newt all 330 pounds of him gets the connects, blades. and then he cuts him that's blades he puts on the ground but it's how far the big man had to run chris bonio out of novacek's hole loops it through four oh nine and we're locked at 17. Boy, that was.
was a good drive by the Dallas Cowboys. Again, look at Newton. He's on the right part of the screen. Here he comes all the way around the corner looking for the support. That's his job to pick up the support guy. And look what he does. He not only drives Benny Blades a couple yards back, but then puts him on the ground. Boy, that's, Boy, that's a big motor scooter coming out of there, Frank. I mean, that's almost amazing. And we know how good he is. He's certainly a great drive blocker, great pass protection. You don't get that many times to look at somebody that big doing that superb a job as a pulling guard. I think he doesn't play with a little emotion, Emmett Smith. That man loves to win. And that man loves to eat. what we're about to see whether it's a positive or a negative will certainly be a quality learning experience for Scott Mitchell on the road against the Dallas Cowboys tie ball game four minutes left hostile noisy crowd well if you were going to grade him this far Dan you would have to say certainly B B plus and we'll see if he can step up to A at the 22 yard line Barry Sanders. Just another Charles Bronson move. Huh? The great escape right out to the 37-yard line. He gets Back more yards. Kevin Smith. He gets more yards on the sidelines than any back I've ever seen. I think he's going out of bounds, and he has that little scurry to stay in bounds. Almost impossible to get under him to make the contact. That is marvelous. I really do. Now watch this. He gets to the outside. Those are all instinctive moves. Nothing is thought out of, about it. He just, his body just flows, and it's just an amazing thing to watch. Got uh -huh. a good block by Halleck and Holman there at the point of attack. 160 yards tonight for Barry Sanders. He seeks a few more, and you can make it 165 out to the 41-yard line. It'll be second down and five. The best performance of the weekend by a ball carrier, Barry Foster. Uh, the Steelers yesterday, 179 yards against Indianapolis. And Emmett Smith. Well, this one, in terms of that individual matchup, lived up to advanced billing, and the game was a hell of a lot better than anybody ever thought it would be. Emmett Smith is staying in in the early going. If you weren't with us, he went out of the ball game on three different occasions after having carried the football on the run. Second and six. Mitchell tip batted incomplete. Aaron Smith got his hand on it. Darren Smith really wasn't rushing the quarterback. He's really just floating as a spy, hovering a couple yards off of the line of scrimmage. Stayed in it and got up in the air when he sensed it was Mitchell's time to throw. Boy, you got to be looking for your big wide receiver now, Herman Moore. Third down, passing situation about six. Darren going high in the air. Third down and six. They are Play clock is down to one, and they just do get it off. And it's thrown complete to the 49-yard line to Aubrey Matthews for a very critical first down conversion. While they were late getting up to the line, they had to go right at the point where the clock went from one to zero, and they hit Matthews for a first down. They would an unlikely call, and to get it off without drawing the penalty. First of all, look at the pocket. Really solid. Side-arming the ball to avoid the pile up in front of him. 11-yard gain of first down. Two-minute warning in Dallas. Great game. It's like a stock that whipsaws. We talked about it at the very beginning, the way they played through the 90s. Here's a game in which they really didn't figure to be in it on the road at Dallas, coming off that performance last week. 
against the Minnesota Vikings. And here they are tied at 17 with a two-minute warning. Well, you said that, Al. In 1989, they were 7-9. and nine, Then they went 6-10. and 10, They were 12-4, and 5-11, and 10-6, and six, back and forth. They haven't really found an identity yet. What's really impressed me is the way they held in there after Dallas took the opening drive, stuffed it right down their throats, and didn't lose it. And here's Barry Sanders. And right now, what Detroit would love to do is keep the ball, set Hanson up for a field goal, and just take as much time off the clock as they can. And the Lions have one timeout left, and the Cowboys have two. And the one timeout, obviously, is very critical for Detroit because uh, this is an opportunity. They'd like to have their full complement of three still at their disposal. The fact that they only have one, a real disadvantage. This guy, though, one of the fine young legs in the National we Football We saw how far he could kick it a yeah. while ago. And I mentioned that he had a 62-yarder when he was a collegiate. Second and a yard at the 39-yard line. And he was a collegiate. Second and a yard at the 39-yard line. And it's Sanders going well, just, just past the line of scrimmage. And uh, I think he shouldn't have enough for the first well, The ball end. came back. Barry did a pretty good job of laying it out a little bit farther after he hit the ground. But I think he's got it. Well, they're going to stop for a measurement here. 103. <laughs> Dallas, Dallas is in a, a very tenuous position here to, in terms of taking its timeouts defensively. They've uh, got two. You, know, you reach the point when you're almost in field goal range. You, you need to conserve a little bit of time. Well, if I'm Dallas, I don't stop the clock for anything. Not Well, not right here. Not right not, here. Not yet. No. Not until they've, they've got to be a lot closer before I do mm -hmm. that. Well, this is going to bring Whoa. up... This will bring up a little fun. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to have to uh, get some ticks off the clock unless you want to try and pick up big yardage on second and short. We talked about it earlier in the game. Well, you go for it on second and short. What that means is you got 20 people on the pile. That mm -hmm. takes a long time to get everybody off. The Dallas folks will be in no hurry to get back up on their feet. This short yardage play, if it is just a buck up the middle to try to get the yard. Well, it's you know, good to be there. you got to take this down the field. Third and inches, and they will start the clock. They wind the clock now. Under a minute to play, and straight ahead, very close again. Now, the only thing that's going to help them is it's so close. There you go. They're going to stop it for a measurement. Scott Mitchell holding on. They should get their play call, yep. get ready to make the snap. See, if they'd have picked up a full yard or two yards where it was apparent that they pick it up, you know, that clock keeps on going. That they're this close, and if they pick it up, this will be a big advantage, a big help to Detroit. Obviously, if they don't make it, it brings up a fourth down. Well, they measure here. It enables Mitchell also to go Dave Levy. Right. A lot of slack in that chain there. Oh, wow, they got it. Now it is a first down. The clock is stopped temporarily, 51 seconds. They have a timeout through the Lions. They will wind the clock as soon as the ball is ready for play, and there it is. They send Herman Moore off to the right. Sanders is the sole setback. Double slot right. Give it to Barry. Oh, Nowhere. great play by Dixon Edwards. On Barry Sanders, you have got to seal off the perimeters. Dixon, Ed Dixon Edwards rather, sealed off the left side of the offensive formation, and what a hit on Sanders. And Detroit does not take no. a timeout. They're saving their last timeout, but they're using almost all of the clock here. We're down to 15 seconds. I can't believe it's taking them this long to oh, run yeah. play. Second down and 12. Oh, I, this that, is that's, a, that's very bad clock management. Real bad. Oh, wide open. Mitchell throwing, nearly picked off at the 15 yard line. Well, Paramount, there's was three left. seconds left in the game. What, what are they doing? Well, that was, it was terrible. But even with one timeout left, you have to take it. There are other ways to stop the clock. Carter Mitchell did not see Brett Perriman. The you coverage know, was blown. He was wide open and screaming for the football down the sidelines. You know, timeouts don't carry over to the next yeah. week. You don't get to take them with you. Yep. <laughs> you, don't, you don't put them up on the wall. No, you do not put them up yeah, on the they're wall. They're going to let Hanson go for it. I mentioned that in college, he kicked one 62 yards. Well, this one is going to be 57 yards. You know, the worst thing that happens is you go to overtime. Best thing that happens, you win the game. Craig holds 57 yards. It's deflected. Okay. Don't touch it, Leon. You're a bad boy. Oh, well, you know. You're a bad, bad boy. <laughs>
time. Oh, and we've got... Well, we're... We've got one of the Dallas Cowboys. That's James Washington who brings the ball out of the end zone. And you got Barry Switzer taking Robert Jones and shoving him back toward the bench. Somebody got a hand on it. The uh, kick was left. low. Time has expired. We go to overtime. 17 all back after this for our ABC stations. We have one spirit of Akron providing the overhead shot. We've got overtime. The toss was won by Detroit. The Lions will get the ball. And Chris Bonio will kick off. Officially, they are saying it's not a block kick, even though it was deflected. And on our replays, as, as, as close as we can tell, of all guys, it was Leon Lett who got his hand on the missed field goal by Hansen, which appeared to be too low anyway, even had it not been touched. Leon goes about 6'6", six, six, and he had a big hand up there. Why do you say of all guys? Now? Well, because everybody remembers the story, the Leon Lett story. It's a shame in a way. He's noted for two things, the two gaps, and he's a hell of a player. He is that. And, you know, it doesn't wipe away Detroit's really poor clock management in the last 30 seconds of that of the fourth quarter. Let's see if they can overcome it here now. It's Mel Gray. Brings it out to the 32-yard line. We now have a definitive shot. There it is from behind. Big Leon, number 78. The left hand up in the air, and oh, yeah. he gets it. You don't call that a deflection? His left hand made sure that Hansen's kick wasn't going to go through the upper. Chris Hansen has got to get a very low trajectory to cover that distance, so it gave Lett another opportunity. Here's one of the big pluses of winning the toss in overtime with the new kicking rules. Look at this field position. An ordinary return here at the 32. Barry Sanders swings to the outside. His big night continues. He picks up about six, takes it to the 38-yard line. One of the fine defensive tackles in the NFL. That's what Leon Lett has become. To play anywhere really down that defensive line, he might make an outstanding defensive end. I mean, half plate him there. Second and four. It's the Lions' second overtime game in three games. They beat Atlanta on opening day. Sanders! Oh! Carry to the Dallas 47 yard line. Oh he is playing like he is possessed tonight. It is a great stage, and of course the man who stands between him and probably the recognition that he feels he should have is sitting on the bench watching him, Emmett Smith. He's putting on a show tonight. How many changes of direction do you make in one run? This is this is a special night, folks. The 22 and 20 going at it. First and 10, that's 191 yards for Barry Sanders. And about two or three more. Uh, well, Derek Moore picks up two or three more right there. We said two or three or four more. Four, 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 four more, exactly. That's exactly what I meant. I just forgot the, the preposition. There we go again. Al said 191 yards. Almost a six-yard per carry average. 5.7 per. He had 220 yards, did Sanders, in a 1991 game against Minnesota, his career best. Moore stopped Robert Jones right there. Third and eight. Barry Sanders, after a couple of big runs, has been coming to the Detroit sideline. Moore's been coming in for a couple of plays. Here comes Sanders back out. Obviously, the heat and the amount of yardage that he's covered tonight taking a physical toll on Barry Sanders. Well, he covers when he gains about eight yards. He covers about 20 yards. Well, there's... This will be an interesting call. Charles Haley was across the line, and then Lomas Brown came out of his stance. Three flags are down. third and 13. Lomas leaning a little bit, it looked like. 
Well, this is, here we go. There's Lomas standing up, Haley with his hand on the ground. Well, actually, yeah, there was a twitch in at the left guard. Sean Bowens moved his left arm and then Brown went. And Haley, the opportunist. Third and 13. Mitchell throws. Herman oh, Moore makes wow. the catch. A first down of the 33 yard line. Oh, well, we've seen a lot of Herman Moore tonight. You'll never see a more aggressive move by Herman Moore going up knowing he was going to get hit. He did get hit. Concentrating completely on the ball and coming down with it. Well, if Detroit should win this game tonight, the five guys up front get a game ball. Scott Mitchell stands in the pocket for a good five seconds getting a good look at the field and boy it's hard to look at the field and not see Herman Moore as big as he is and either Moore or Perriman blew that pattern because yeah. they most certainly were not supposed to be three to four yards apart and Perryman is injured he's still down on the field in the Detroit medical staff but look at this look at Scott Mitchell and look at the time he has finally from behind he gets hit by Russell Maryland but he had just seconds upon seconds to stand there and survey the field you know, we talked about we talked about Barry Sanders and how the weather and everything has affected him. Well, here we are in overtime. Dallas doesn't have the depth that they used to have on their defensive line. You know, they lost Casillas. Jimmy Jones is gone. They used to shuttle these guys in and out of there, and the Dallas defensive linemen having to play a lot more snaps than they used to in the past. Continuing to look at Brett Perriman, who now he's on his feet, but again, what a terrific effort on the part of Herman Moore and the young quarterback Scott Mitchell just to get it there. Well, the problem with Perryman leaving the game here is I think this is going to change whatever coverages that Dallas is going to use. With Remember, Anthony Carter's out with a broken collarbone. Perryman's off the field. You can count on the fact that Herman Moore is going to be double covered. Johnny Morton, the number one pick in USC. We have not seen much of him tonight. Aubrey Matthews has had a couple big catches tonight. A couple of fine first down catches by Matthews. First down, Detroit at the Dallas 33. Sanders to the 31. That is 33 carries tonight. Boy, that's a lot of work. Oh, boy. That's Par Perriman is coming back into the game. And that is a career high. That's the, the most carries for Barry ever. Save him a spot in the hot tub. He's earned it. Second and eight. Another carry, and there's Leon Lett, who won't let go. Oh, no. And all of these yards down here hurt because they are within field goal range, and that is just going to extend that distance. We are. Those were precious yards. You're right, Frank. Dancha has made one from 32 and missed from 51 and 57. He's looking at about a 52-yarder right now. Well, that's a miscommunication between Kevin Glover, the center, and Sean Bowens, the left guard. One of those two guys should have been responsible for stamping Leon Lett and stopping him at the line. Four and a half minutes into overtime. Third and 11, and flags are down. That was uh, Jim Jeffcoat. Well, this play, this play never happened. Ball start. Well, Detroit, because of the play of Leon Lett, and now the false start of Sean Bowens, has cost themselves close to 10 yards. 10 very, very critical yards when you're talking about being in overtime and in field goal range, they have now put, this out, put themselves back to a 57-yard field goal from what was about a 47-yard field goal. Perriman back in the game. He split left, more to the right. Third down, 16 at the 40. Sanders, and he takes it to the 34 and a half. So you're looking at a 52-yard field goal now. Well within Hanson's range. Cowboy is shaking up. Well, when you see a soccer kicker, when he puts too much into it, you have a tendency to pull it to the left. That's what we saw with Hanson trying the, the winning attempt at a field goal at the end of regulation. James Washington, the Cowboy, that was shaken up on that tackle of Barry Sanders. We'll give Hanson a little bit of time to think about it. 
Switzer and the special teams coach Joe Avizano. Wayne Fonts. I think uh, we've got a Maalox moment going on here on both sides. <laughs> you know, in, in a way, you would, you would think, well, no matter what happens, that Detroit can come away feeling pretty good taking Dallas this this far on the road, but not at, no, not with, with this many chances to win the game. No. This would be a bad ride home for Detroit. They're, they're not, they don't view themselves as uh, a, a lower level team that can come away from a game like this and, and draw any consolation from mm -hmm. just being able to say, ah, oh, we played pretty good. You know, we really gave Dallas a scare. Uh, the Lions think they're better than that. They think that they're a team that is good enough to come down here and be expected to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Now, we'll find out and we'll know a little more after Hanson's kick. His best in a couple of years, Detroit 53 yards. As I mentioned earlier, he has kicked it much further at the collegiate level. He's able to reach it. Again, he's made more than 32, missed from 51 and 57. This is 52 yards. Dave Craig to put it down. There has not been a 50-yard field goal in the league this season. Six, six. Well, there was penetration up front, but that ball, that ball really looked low. Again, I think uh, it was just Hanson trying to reach for more distance, lowering the trajectory and making it vulnerable. All right, let's take a look right in the middle. Leon Lett is right over the center. Now they are definitely getting some penetration. It is Leon. Yeah, Lett. The left hand. The left hand. Well, they they moved. inspire the offense of the Cowboys. Boy, they, they did a great job of driving Detroit back. Talk about a guy that finds the spotlight. Leon Lett, the pass for Johnston is low, second and ten. You know, this Detroit offense, they gotta be a little cool. They haven't played any football in a long time. Well, that's several times tonight that Aikman has been short on that little out pass to his fullback, the little check pass. He was thrown that very poorly tonight. Well, Detroit had the ball at the end of regulation. They've had the ball for five and a half minutes of overtime. It, there's been a few ticks off the old clock since uh, Dallas has played any offense. Second and ten, Dallas at the 42. Game time at 17. Five and a half minutes into overtime. Emmett Smith. Up to the 44, gain of a couple. Third down and eight. Later tonight on Nightline, former President Carter, Senator Sam Nunn, General Colin Powell will be featured following your late local news. Third down and seven at the 45-yard line. Throws, Novacek was held on to. Interference. Spielman. Grabbed Novacek once again. Yeah, Spielman was all over him and he knew it. That's that was brought about by a great move by Jay Novacek. He he faked Chris Spielman into having to grab him. I think he's picked up four first downs on receptions and a couple tonight on penalties. Man, Novacek runs good patterns. Watch this guy come off the ball. That little hitch to the outside and then coming back. And there he tries to go outside again and Spielman hooks him. That, that's just brought about by the quality of the pattern run by Jay Novacek. <laughs> Spielman knows he's been had and just reaches out with the left hand and grabs well, That was a good look at uh, Aikman and Novacek working together. That pass designed to go over the middle. They both read that he had to go to the outside. Smith, oh boy. Runs right into who else? Spielman. <laughs> oh, what a game he's played. Isn't that... Hasn't that always been the hallmark of the game's great players? That after something negative happens, they always seem to come back with a positive. 
Look at Chris Spielman read it, come right through the hole and put a stamp right in the chest of Emmett Smith. Robert Porsche was on the bottom around Smith's ankle. Well, I'll tell you, they're asking him an awful lot to cover Novacek, period. Second and 11 at the 49-yard line. Aikman throws. Johnson makes the catch. He's rolled down at the 45-yard line. He's about five yards shy of the first down. Damashi makes the tackle. Key third down coming up. Third and five. Well, the two wideouts since the first quarter. Calvin Harper and Michael Urban have been pretty much taken out of this game. They have been very quiet. Most of the third down action has been left to Novacek, as you might suspect, if you're getting double coverage on the two outstanding wideouts, you're going to free up the tight end. Well, this is the part of the game where the confidence of the world champion is a big plus. Third down and five, and they give it to Emmett Smith, and he has the first down. He gets seven. Well, that's believing in your big man. Third and five, you go with the draw, and Emmett Smith gets the first down, and he's hurt. Smith Riley, Harry Colon was the man who made that very hard tackle at the end. I think he jammed his shoulder or his head right into the buttocks of his own man. That was his 27th carry of the night. There was a, it was a pretty jarring hit by Harry Colon yeah. at the conclusion of the play. Michael Irvin is the cowboy out in front blocking, and, and there's contact here, but watch how hard right there, right there that hit by Cole and hits the helmet of, of Emmett Smith and kind of pushes his head off to the right side right there that that collision with Cole Emmett Smith still down on the field and what you have to hope for and is that it is a stinger that it's a little scary if you haven't experienced them in Here. any of them and uh, looks as so that's what that's going to be. And if that numbness goes down your arms, down your legs, and all of a sudden you wonder what has happened to me. And it's, it's, a, it's not a wonderful thing, is no. it? In a situation like that, you have to come out for one play. So it's an injury timeout. You take at least one play off. The ball is at the 37-yard line. 6.55 left in overtime. He had sudden death overtime, but... It winds up as a tie if you run out to 15 minutes. Each team with two timeouts in OT. Keep in mind, the Cowboys have a rookie kicker in Bonio. It is deflected and it is caught by a lineman at the 38. That's Derek Morris. He loses the football and Pat Swilling has it. All right. How, how strange does it get? Michael Johnson tipped it to start things. Canard wound up with it. He loses the football. Swilling gets it. Canard gets it, and then can hardly hold on to it. He juggles the ball. Watch, watch Derek Canard. He has it. Oh, and then just can't put it away. I think it was Owens who knocked it out of there, and Swilling just but caught it in the air. Violated a Canard. <laughs> Number 90 gets a hand in. What's this? You come up from behind. Derek has the ball. He puts it away. It is a legitimate fumble. He had possession, put it away, and then had it knocked out by Owens. Mm. What a weird football game. Weird, wacky. Former Saint is a center at the moment. The ball is at the 45-yard line, and this is Barry Sanders going nowhere. They are eight and a half minutes into overtime. Well, when you, the tackle. when you played the game, coaches had a had an expression that they always loved. I don't care what level you played, coaches called it a gut check, a fortitude check, a toughness check, whatever you want to call it. Well, that's at the six minute and ten second mark of overtime. That's what every player on the field here for Detroit and Dallas is going through right now. These guys are fatigued beyond belief. They're on autopilot and they're playing their hearts out. That's to go. This is now the 70th minute of the game. Under six minutes to play in overtime, and Mitchell throws, and it's caught at the 50-yard line by Herman Moore, who takes it down to the 47. It's going to be third and two. One thing about the Cowboys, in contrast to the Lions, at least Dallas has a week off. And what better time than after a Monday night overtime? Yep. The NFC East 
this is it's their bye week next week and uh, you're right this will come at a good time Detroit meanwhile goes home and they'll face the Patriots and Bledsoe third and two at the 47 yard line Sanders Ooh, he's real close he's real close and Robert Depends on where they mark it they did not give him a good mark well Robert Jones saved a big play the Cowboys came with an inside linebacker blitz. What that means, if Barry Sanders gets past that first wave, there's nobody left. <laughs> That'll just go down as one tackle on the game summary, but this is a biggie by Robert Jones, number 55. Look at that. He fights off the block of Ty Halleck, falls back to the inside, and that's a biggie. Yeah, first down. Yeah, it's, a first down. Oh, it's a first down, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Barry Sanders could have gone right up the tunnel. We talked about the heat. We talked about the exhaustion that these players are going through at the moment. Barry Sanders has carried it a record number of times for, what is it now, in times of carries? 197 yards, 37 carries. Boy, that's a night. First down at the 45. Carry number 38 is a loss. 37, though, he long ago surpassed his personal high and it's now a new Detroit Lion team record with four and a half left in overtime uh, that was 38 and uh, I think it's time for Scott Mitchell to test the uh, test the airways I think we've got to uh, if Detroit's going to get in position here I think they've got to got to make something happen through the air second and 12 at the 47 again each team two timeouts and he throws and he throws Perryman who was oh, curling was outside and was open he had it and he just seemed to hurry it he didn't look like he stepped into it threw off his oh, back he turned it. Woodson right around little move to the inside Woodson gets turned around he's wide open and he should have stepped into uh, this he had time to step into it he didn't do it no bad he threw completely off his heels falling backward actually as he threw the ball Third and 12 at the 47. Detroit and Dallas tied at 17. Mitchell rolling, directing, going back across his oh, body. And that is incomplete at the 34. Perriman couldn't hold it. He was blanketed. Risky. Boy, how risky that was for the youngster. We saw the inexperience a few moments ago when he didn't get the ball to Perriman, and that one could have been very costly. The problem is he ends up having to roll out and he didn't hardly have a receiver anywhere near the sideline. Perryman's the closest one, but he's clear inside by the hash marks. Washington in there doing battle. Yep. And amazingly, Mitchell delivered the ball. Now Montgomery to punt. They're out of field goal range, so he'll have to send it down to Clayton Holmes. Bounces sideways inside the 15, and it will be down at the... 16-yard line. Pretty good bounce for Dallas. And Malone downs it there. 347 left in overtime. Dallas with two timeouts. And, uh, well, the score is 17 all and 362 yards for Detroit and 345 for Dallas and the Cowboys have the football. Those are lofty rushing numbers by both clubs. You get over 150 yards, and you're doing quality work. These two teams have 156 and what? 206. Pretty good numbers for two guys. No. <laughs> and two pretty good offensive lines tonight. That's Johnston in the slot. Aikman throws underneath to Emmett. And he gets out to the 23-yard line. So Detroit couldn't get Hanson into position. Now the question is, can Dallas get the rookie Bonyol into position for a game-winning field goal? Don't you feel somewhere you're, we're going to have an Urban, we're going to have a, a Harper, or something deep? Detroit thus far has just closed down these two outstanding wide receivers. You get two timeouts in overtime. That's what both of these clubs still have on the board. Three minutes and ten seconds for Dallas. Second and three, and they're going to give it to Emmett again, and he's going to pick up the first down. He takes it out to the 32-yard line. Not only did
do you have the two time you get the two minute warning it's, it's the same the rules are now the same as they would be at the end of any regular fourth quarter saw some missed tackles there by Detroit again these players are physically exhausted and that's one of the first things that begins to crop up are missed tackles Aikman, good play fake. Irvin open 49 yard line, and it's a first down that was in a, Detroit territory. Robert start. Massey was there, and Irvin is shaken. At that time, Irvin, with full concentration, he knew he was going to get hammered. He did. Held on to the football and got the first down. All right, he got the wind knocked out of him. That's, that's a shoulder right in the midsection. And Watch him concentrate on this ball and come down with it. He hugs it to his chest. He knows he's going to get hit. He pulls it right in, and he almost loses it as Massey puts his shoulder right on the ball. Great effort by an outstanding wide receiver. It's a tough game, folks. It's a tough game played by really tough people. <laughs> mentally right, tough. Frank. This is Mike being Lerner. mentally tough on the part of a wide receiver. He knew he was going to get it, and he did get it. Some oxygen starting to return to Michael Irvin's lungs. First thing is you feel like you're going to die. The second, you hope you do. And the third, it starts to come back into your lungs. And he's fine. Yeah. 222 left in overtime, plus the two-minute warning. It's been uh, almost five years since the NFL has seen a tie. Chiefs, Browns, 10-10 in November of 89. We, we almost saw one on a Monday night about three years ago. Remember that game in Chicago? The Jets and the Bears. Were that was one of the great wild. games. Oh, you remember that one with the cards? Yeah, there is a go. That was on a Monday night. That was on a Monday night. 1983, the Cardinals and the Giants. You had a great, like had a great field goal kicker that night. That might have been one of the ugliest games ever played on this planet. Emmett Smith is sent back into Emmett Dallas Smith. territory, back at the 48-yard line. And now we come to the two-minute warning. So they have that much time and two timeouts as Dallas tries to set up for a game-winning field goal for the rookie, Chris Bonial. You asked me if I played that game, I almost denied it. I knew you did. To make Dodge Intrepid more spacious, we move the wheels that normally go here, out, and back to here. Up front, the wheels that were here were moved out to here. It's a concept called cab forward that yields astonishing room for people like me. While good things like wider doors, sports car handling, and superb aerodynamics. Your area on AV3 this Saturday, beginning at 3.30 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific. Colorado and Michigan, the headliner as you look at the slate. Tyrone Wheatley may come back for that game. Heisman Trophy candidate hasn't played. And then Monday night we go to Buffalo, New York, Western New York, the Broncos and the Bills. Five, 9 o'clock Eastern, next Monday night. Great matchup of two great quarterbacks. Both put, came into the league in 82. And outstanding careers. Well, this has been his, this has been outstanding here. The Jerry Jones <laughs> exhorting his team from the sidelines. So many good football players. So many alternatives for Troy Aikman here. And so much time left. Two minutes, two timeouts. Second and 12, Irvin is back in the game. Aikman. Look out! Oh, he's hit from behind. The ball's he loose. The 43, and Detroit has the football. Broderick Thomas stripped it. Boy, Troy took a long time looking downfield. You know, after that much time, you got to worry somebody's coming up from behind. Well, he was trying to step back into the pocket. He knew he was in trouble, and he just held on to it too long. But... Thomas coming around the horn, got the hand in there. Broderick Thomas talked earlier about how they have been so happy with his performance. Here he comes, number 51, getting around Eric Williams and coming back in, slapping at the ball and slapping it out. There's a limit to how long a quarterback can stand in the pocket with the football, and Troy Aikman exceeded that limit. Ball at the 43-yard line. One first down, and they're back in field goal range. And there is your one first 
down, and Brett Perriman with a flag down makes it to the 25-yard line. Now the flag's not at the line of scrimmage. The flag's downfield. Oh, and this is against the Dallas Cowboys. The contact may be on the five yards allowed. He was number 24. Riding, riding, riding. That's Larry Brown. You can't take the left over four yards. Does it five yards? It's a penalty that doesn't come into play because of the completion. It's declined by Detroit. Number 76 is an eligible receiver. Number 76. And number 76, an eligible receiver downfield. Scott Conover. No, he's Scott Conover is an eligible receiver now in this yeah. formation. Yeah. Coming up is. Yeah, Bernie Kukar announcing it. Bernie Kukar now says Detroit, Detroit takes a timeout. 147 remaining in overtime. They're in field goal range. Grand. Right now, if they didn't gain another yard, he's looking at about a 43-yard field goal. Well, his last two have been the equivalent of hitting one irons mm -hmm. low. Yeah. I think he needs to strike a pitching wedge this time. And, he missed a 42-yarder last week. Uh, get a little immediate elevation. On opening day, he won a game on a 37-yarder in overtime against Atlanta in the Dome. And I'd put two guys on Leon Lett. Mm -hmm. Try to keep him from getting some penetration. If Detroit wins, uh, a big assist to Broderick Thomas. He pulled off the hat trick. That was a sack, a forced fumble, and a recovered fumble to set Detroit up. Well, I congratulate both of these clubs. They have played hard. They have fought. They have hit. And they did not give up under really hot, humid conditions down on the field. Well, this could be a very defining moment for Detroit. They go on to win this game tonight. A game like this is the reason a lot of people like this game. First down of the 26. Barry Sanders goes nowhere. And you see Barry not doing what he is prone to do, and that is to take the risk, bounce to the outside. He's not going to lose any yardage down at this point. He knows where he is in field position. I don't think Detroit should be afraid to put the ball in the air here. The Lions have one timeout remaining. That much time left in overtime as long as Mitchell doesn't take a sack as long as he's extremely careful to get rid of the football I wouldn't be afraid to run some high percentage passes here well, they're not going to do it not in that formation <laughs> second and nine they give it to Barry Ooh, he's back to the 28th and now you're looking at a 45 yard field goal and exactly you can, by Jeff Cole you can Mitchell is upset with the calls that are coming in he jumped up and down stomped his feet he wants to put the ball downfield you can be conservative to a fault. Very little tempted to try to get to the outside. Maybe cost a yard. Third down, Third down and 12, and Dallas takes a timeout. With 39 seconds remaining in overtime. And third and long when we come back. Overtime. If they do not pick up a yard here, it's about a 45-yard field goal attempt for Jason Hansen. All this play calling will be forgotten if uh, Hansen drills the field goal, but it has been extremely conservative here by Detroit. One for four is those are not the kind of numbers that inspire a lot of confidence either in the coach or the kicker. This will be an interesting call. It has a lot to do with what you believe in your young quarterback. Give him a high percentage pass, or will well, you put an extraordinary running back Barry Sanders into the line one more time? And Herman Moore is standing Sanders. on the sideline, so... Draw your own conclusion. Oh, yeah. Well, Mitchell's, he's just going to set, he's going to set Hanson up right in the middle of the field. That's all that was. Well, that's high percentage stuff there. Dallas takes a timeout because if Hanson, if Hanson misses this one, Dallas would get the ball at about the 34 with 32 seconds remaining. Hmm. Or if they block yet another one.
fact is, the world isn't built for short people. I consider myself an expert on this. It's a perspective that's helped all of us at Saturn in considering how safety features designed for the average man of 5'8 were affecting those of us who aren't. Had led us to test dummies of various sizes and to design our airbag system for humans of various sizes. Anyway, from down here, it seems like everyone needs looking out for. Filtered Miller Genuine Draft, the cold one. For those who've discovered a smooth draft taste, you know I've been looking for that. The world is a very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. These guys play five quarters, and it comes down to a guy who doesn't have a matching pair of shoes. Hmm. It's all black and white right here, isn't it? Tell yes, you, yes or makes, no? If he makes this field goal, Detroit's going to be hard-pressed to give up those uniforms. They're going to want to play in them next week or until they lose. Dallas, on the other hand, will never wear those things. No way he's not thinking about big number 78, who's got a hand on a couple of his longer attempts tonight. Dave Craig will put it down at the 34. A 34-yard Hanson attempt to try to win it for Detroit. said last night this is a real measuring stick for my team well they measured up they go to Dallas and they beat the world champions in overtime Wayne Fonts put a lot of stock in this game and finding out what kind of a football team he had. The Dallas Cowboys will be there. They will be there. They have too much talent to not be there. The Detroit Lions found out a great deal tonight, both about Scott Mitchell and about their football team. Certainly their defensive team that took the explosive Dallas Cowboy offense and almost, other than Emmett Smith with a few key runs, they just took their passing game right out of it. Well, and, and, and you got it. There's going to be a lot of questions being asked this week here in Dallas. <laughs> Jerry Jones, body English didn't work. But you know what? This is an offense that struggled last week against the Houston Oilers. It's an offense that struggled tonight against the Detroit Lions. For all their talent, the Detroit, the Dallas Cowboys, rather, the last two weeks have not been all that impressive mm -hmm. in moving the football through the air. Emmett Smith tonight, great night. Passing-wise, they just have not been clicking. Well, Hanson wins it, but the real heroes, Barry Sanders and Broderick Thomas with that sack forced fumble and recovered fumble to set him up. And one of the fine turnaround 